The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get your home ready for winter. Schedule your furnace tune-up with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning and save $30. Visit standardheating.com to book and lock in your savings. The 93X half ass Morning Show. 93X. Ah, well, this is it. And it uh, couldn't have happened to a, a nicer group of people. Today is our Friday, and uh, we say word life, and welcome to the 93X Half Fast Morning Show. Welcome to the day. Da- Josh, have you met my wife? You know, <laughs> we cover this a lot. I've known her for two decades. My Your wife. My wife. She went running out the damn house last night. 9.30 p.m. Oh, whoa. Uh, maybe even later, 9.30, 9.45. Where She went running out the door <laughs> so she could try to take pictures of what folks were calling the northern lights. You know, I don't, mm. that's on my bucket list, and I didn't realize I could just go outside last night. I, I heard rumors, but I thought, eh, they've said that before, and I've never seen them. But I had a, a buddy send me some beautiful photos. Oh, boy, they were trading photos back and forth last night. Yeah, I've never uh, seen them in person, and I'd love to. Yeah, What's I've seen you? them on Snapchat. I, I've <laughs> seen them in person. Uh, one of the times I went up to Grand Marais for a weekend, and it's, I mean, it's undescribable. And it sucks because pictures never do it justice. I feel like I get a good enough idea. No, <laughs> Snapchat it's, did pretty good last night. I'm telling night. you, it's, it's insane seeing it in person. Yeah, I want to see it. Uh, it was bizarre behavior, I thought. Even worse, uh, from the wife, she came back. Oh, sorry. You didn't change the locks, sir. After a stretch <laughs> of time, she came back. Um, yeah, the northern lights hit town uh, you go out last night, and everybody was losing their friggin' minds. Did you go look at all? We went for a drive, right? Uh-huh. And uh, saw nothing. Came back to the house, and then... As we were, you know, each laying on on our respective couches watching the television, I think what happened was the friggin' wife playing around with her cellular telephone saw that people in our neighborhood were taking these magical pictures of the northern lights. And, I mean, she took off out the door like a shot. At first, when she shot up off the couch, I thought she had to use the bathroom because she has really, really bad irritable bowel syndrome. Oh, so when she first shot up off the couch, I thought, well, she's going to the toilet. But no, she just grabbed the car keys, went a running, uh, into, got into one of our motor vehicles. It was a big panic attack. Super Luber Jesus and a few other texters are saying that you couldn't see him with the naked eye in the cities, but your camera could capture them. I've not heard that before. <laughs> I don't know. Supposed to be better tonight. It's not anything that I uh, fall down and touch myself uh, over, but, I mean, uh, she went running out the door, and she said people were lining the streets in our neighborhood, staring up at the sky. Madness. Total madness. Yeah. It's it's going to be even better tonight, you say? uh, That's what some techs are saying. Um, All right. It's one of those things I've always wanted to, to catch those. But I wonder if it's like you people say about uh, Mount Rushmore, which I've also never seen, where you oh. kind of get there and you're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That was the first thing that yep. popped in my head, Josh, when we were talking it, about this. Yep. <laughs> I did not get that vibe that, from Mount Rushmore, that Josh. That was very <laughs> underwhelming. I'm glad, very. I'm glad you didn't, Ashley, because it's a. have always wanted, since I was a little kid, I thought, wow, that's the coolest thing. I, I really want to go see that. And then people are like, dude, you get there, it's packed, you look at it and go, this was a wasted trip. The no, only, the only good part was, was they had an ice cream stand at the yep. end. When you walk through it, they had a little shop where you get an ice cream cone. Otherwise, I would have been really upset. Yeah, and it takes so long to get up there. Like, you have to go through back roads, and then you have to go up the hill and park <laughs> and walk. Uh, Josh, I know you, you, it's, you'd you probably be interested in something like this. They also do helicopter rides. Oh, do they really? Rushmore. Yeah, I've heard those are really cool. Uh, I've done signer. one, and I loved it. Absolutely loved the. And that was over the Grand Canyon, which I thought was pretty impressive. I know other people have said, well, yeah, that's a big crack right there, and that's it. Uh, the I Grand Canyon is going to come into play in our stupid news report, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. Have uh, you seen National Treasure? The second uh, one. What, what yes. is that? No, uh, the first one. Then you've seen well, what is Rushmore. It? Oh, they go, it's a Nicolas Cage movie. Oh, it's a movie. Yeah. 
He I like follows clues throughout like history, relics and stuff like that. All right, Cubby, I've seen the Northern Lights in person. Up uh, up in Ely, International Falls. I've seen him a couple times up there. Uh, you'd like it a lot. You like leaves and trees and nature and all that. You'd like it a lot. Um, Mount Rushmore, I'm with the rest of these folks. Uh, this is 30-some years ago that I, me and some pals, we uh, made a road trip to Colorado. On our way home, we hit the uh, Mount Rushmore scene, and it was just pretty much what everyone else has been describing. Uh, we were excited as all hell, and we kind of walked up and thought, uh, okay, you know. That was it, huh? That's so disappointing because it's one of those places. Like, I, I don't like to travel, but there's a handful of places I'd like to go, and that's one. But, but I think you would really like it. Mm-hmm. You're just a deeper person than the rest of us. Well, I don't know about that. I think I'm easier to entertain simply because I don't do anything. So maybe it doesn't take much. I'll go along with that as well. People but I, are, I found it also to be uh, underwhelming, Mount Rushmore. Thank you, everyone, who's sending in pictures of the Northern Lights from last night. I've noticed quite a few of them. The red ones look like Metallica's Load album. There's oh. a couple of them I thought, are you tricking me here? I've got the Load album. I know what that looks like. <laughs> People are sending you pictures that they took last night. Everybody was out doing it. It was a, it was a hell of a scene. So, all right. We got plenty to do today. 7.30, we're going to chit-chat with Minnesota Vikings long snapper Andrew DePaula. He's on vacation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was nice of him to agree to call in. He's got a week off. I wonder how his experience was in England. Did he like it, or was it, is it a Rush, Mount Rushmore for some of you where he saw <laughs> Big Ben and he saw whatever else they got over there and thought, oh, you're just going to have to ask the prick. Yeah. I could see, well, it's funny. I could see him going either way, right? I could see him really liking it or going, ah, it wasn't that great. Or maybe they, maybe they didn't even have time right. to see much. I remember two years ago they played a game in London, and that's kind of what he said. He said they had basically like an hour to themselves at one point, and they didn't really get the chance to, you know, go sightsee or anything. Oh, we talked to him about London once? I believe we did, yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I guess I don't remember that. Yeah, you know, we uh, played a football game over there in England, and they uh, dumped a week off on the guy. So uh, he's going to join us anyway, even though if I were him, I'd be sleeping in. Oh, yeah. Then... <laughs> We'll be ready to make a new famous friend through a fresh edition of a gimmick we call Who Dis. Randy Shaver and Brad Ryder are going to ask our guest yes or no questions to try and figure out who Dis is. You said famous friend. Yes. Uh, That's like a reoccurring bit I have with my wife sometimes where there'll be a celebrity, whatever it is, we're watching something or listening to something and... Last night's example was Stevie Wonder came on the radio. Stevie Wonder. And I thought, uh, I asked my wife, I'm like, do you think it would ever be possible where if Stevie Wonder and I somehow ran into each other, we could become fast friends? I mean, I don't know how much time we have left with Stevie Wonder, but I wonder if we'd be buddies in some way. Interesting little scenario, that little game that you and the wife play. Yeah, every, so Every once in a while, uh, there'll be a celebrity where I think, I bet, I bet I, that guy would be a good friend to have. Well, what did the wife say to you about the possibility of you and uh, little Stevie Wonder becoming friends? So we've done this bit quite a few times, and never once did she think that person would have any interest <laughs> in being my friend. Never how, once. Dang. How, how is that possible? You're a very personable, friendly guy. Uh, did she give you any reason why you and Stevie Wonder wouldn't become fast friends? She didn't have anything specific, but you know, my family is very bad for my mental health. You guys have seen it. Oh, I, yeah. I am hilarious. Abused. <laughs> I'm abused. It, sometimes it's cutting how clever they are with, and sometimes, I mean, I, I'll just get memes that are very insulting or, like, even little things uh, like last night. Um, I don't I, know why your, your family, your wife and her kids, I don't know why they want to be anything but friendly with the person who saved them from total disaster. <laughs> That's not true. Because that is what you did when you married that woman. Okay, so what, 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 what's the latest nastiness that's so, happening? And this one, this was mild. But, the, I mean, this, it's, it's a barrage of sometimes creative disses towards me and sometimes very biting. But, like, even last night, I, I was too lazy to go down to the basement and I asked my uh, youngest if he'd be kind enough to quote bring his old man up some some ginger ale 
right? God, does this guy know how to party or what? I know. I just realized how old that sounds. And he's like, well, you he's got sure. the, the old part right. I mean, like I said, that's a mild thing, but there's I can't even have something simple. There's no simple transaction where some sort of slight doesn't have to come out of it. Where they're just like, yes, Father, I will get you a ginger ale. Exactly. Would you like me to get you some more of those originals while I'm down there? Hey, you know, you do a lot for me. You do a lot for me. Yeah, no problem. I'm down here anyways. I'll bring you up one. I think you would become fast friends with uh, just about anybody, Josh. Yeah. And I've, I'm at about my wit's end uh, with the treatment that you get on the, uh, that you get at home. Um, if you hadn't come along, uh, your wife right now and her kids will be living in a spider hole with a dude who looks and acts like Kid Rock. Why don't you tell her that? Because <laughs> I truly believe that's true. That sounds like a nightmare. You'd be living in a spider. <laughs> she would be living in a spider hole. Uh, last, a shoebox. Last time I, I had COVID, and I'm a, so, I've had COVID so many times, I got a key to the city. I mean, they're like, hey, way to go. Um, I got texts calling me a pussy from my own family. <laughs> all right, now I'm going to be with your stepchildren. We're all going to be together next weekend in Wisconsin. Uh, I, I think they need a, a good talking to. Oh, you know, I'll be honest. I enjoy it. I, that's how we express yeah, well, love I in don't. the family. I think I, that's how we express love. And I'll tell you what, that if that's the case, I'm the most loved person in the family with the abuse I get. I'm not interested in hearing any more about it. I'm there. There's going to be a talking to when we get to Wisco. I'm looking forward to this trip. I can't wait. I, I, uh, do we have a new sales guy? Um, you we, guys know Brad? Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, he was in our studio not too yeah. long ago. Yeah. Uh, we were talking you, about... The, you, uh, the name is pronounced Brad? Brad. I yes. know Brad Ryder. Ah, it's a different yeah, Brad. Not, not that Okay, Brad. what about our new sales guy? I don't think I've met him yet. He's Well, you, you have met him. <laughs> You've definitely met him. You've had a conversation with him. But Brad, uh, he's going to be joining us. Do you so, think Brad and I would become fast friends? I think so. <laughs> yeah? I th I, and it has everything to do with you, not him. But yes, you absolutely would. Okay. You're so, excited to spend time with, the, with Yeah, there's this. a few people that are relatively new that are going to be showing up. Brad fun character. To hang out with Who them. else is showing up brand new? First timer. Chet. Chet. Our ah, program yeah. director. Love Chet. Promotions director, Chet. He'll be joining us. He's a fun dude. Yeah, yeah. he is. I, I haven't met him. You've, you've actually met him. You've had yeah. text. To, I gave you his phone number yesterday. You had a you had a text conversation with Chet. I'm looking forward to meeting the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you guys really like him. Yeah, no, he's great. But uh, do you? I, think, I can't remember if I told this on or off air. But the first time I met Brad, I'm walking back from the bathroom, and we were we had no time. But I had to pee so bad. You know, sometimes I gotta pee. Well, you're racing your way back to the studio for a broadcast? Yeah. Okay. And so I'm kind of speed walking, a class I did take at Normandale in the late 90s. Yeah. And I'm speed walking back, and I didn't have time to dry my hands. And he reaches out to shake my hand, uh -oh. and I'm like, I, I don't know what to do here. I, I'm, Squish. This is the first time we met. <laughs> my hands soaked. It's basically dripping, half pee, half water. I don't think I even used any soap. Oh. But he's, he, he, you know, he wanted to go for it. I got my hand in between my legs, <laughs> drying my hand as fast as I can. It probably looks really dirty, and it was still a wet handshake. And you know what, Brad? Forgave me. He's that type of guy. <laughs> you, you're going to like hanging out with him. But I can't wait for uh, you know, uh, listeners to get to meet some of these guys. I'm they're going to represent the station well, and that's not always been the case, as you know. No, not always been the case. I'm looking forward to meeting Chet and Brad. Who you've met before, uh, yes. When we get to Wisconsin. Outdoor weed, Jesus, on the topic of the way your uh, stepchildren and your wife treat you at home, Josh. Outdoor weed, Jesus says, I think, as Greg Coleman would say, Josh's family needs a tune-up. No, that was Chuck Foreman who said that. <laughs> uh Last week on our program, Chuck Foreman, um, in reference to someone who might need to, uh, you know, get straightened out. Chuck Foreman said tune up, not Greg Coleman. Boy, Greg Coleman, did you ever, after a Vikings loss, uh, if you, did you ever you listen to Greg Coleman do his interviews in the locker room after a Vikings loss? It's like a funeral. Oh, I know. I was worried about him. It was one of my least favorite things. And I'm not trying to be a deck here to Greg Coleman. I'm, I'm a fan. He's a nice guy. I've met him a couple of times. He's a good speaker. Uh, but, yes, I know what you're talking about. When I used to listen to a Vikings game or two on the radio, 
if they lost and they check in with Greg Coleman in the locker room, it was the most over dramatic five minutes of your life. <laughs> it really was. Hey, let's check uh, in with uh, Greg. Yeah, here Ted, you go. Teddy Bridgewater. That was a, that was a, <clears throat> that was a real tough loss on, on the road, wasn't it? I, I just wanted to <laughs> kick my radio. <laughs> it's not that big of a friggin' deal. They lost a ball game. <laughs> You yeah. didn't even get to sleep in your own bed last night. <sighs> he really, really took that hard. So, I, Danny, you're, you've heard that, too? Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> you're 100% spot on. The first time I ever heard it, I thought, oh, no, someone must have died on the field. What happened? There must have been a terrible injury. But, no, it's just a loss. No, they just <sighs> lost 17-14 to the Bears. <laughs> yeah, in week three. <laughs> All right. So... Your wife has never said that any of the celebrities in the little game that you play at the house, your wife has never said that any of the celebrities that you've brought up have a chance to become your friend? Yeah, I mean, and I've asked a um, long-running bet with my kids, too, is I'll ask if any of the any hot chicks asked about me, you know, at school that day. Like, hey, any of the ladies ask about me? A couple of teachers, maybe a mom or something, and they've never given me the satisfaction to say one has. So I just tell them they will. Well, one of these days. They're just playing the long game with well, Josh. One of these days, they're going to ask, who's that Kid, guy that dropped you off? Kids can be mean, right? They can. I don't know any kids who have the balls to speak to an adult like that. Well, <laughs> I guess I, ha I know one kid. A um, friend of mine's got, uh, Jesus, three daughters. Oof. Isn't he, your niece kind of... He's not a happy guy. That, with three dot, not a happy guy. Your niece is not afraid to go after you a little bit. Well, she joins in with my uh, well, my uh, sister and my friggin' wife when they're yeah. teasing me. Yeah, uh, my niece will, will get involved. But she doesn't take it too far. She knows I'll, I'll smack her. She doesn't make fun of a neurological condition you have, like my kids do with epilepsy. You for see, me. You, you're going to get <laughs> something you can't control. It's brutal. You're something gonna get I take medication it. for and I could die from. If I keep hearing these stories and I'm going to have six beers over there in Wisconsin and I'm going to end up saying something I regret to your family. Cam's the only one that's nice to me. Don't take it out on him. My buddy, who's got three daughters, when they were little, they, they were a little nasty. One of them. <laughs> like, how little are we talking, do you know? Oh, I'm no good at estimating age, weight, things like that. Uh, little kids. Little kids, uh, I'd say, like, first graders, okay? Okay. Um, one of them said to me, God, what did she say? Um, she did not like my teeth. Jeez. <laughs> and it was, I think her comment was, your teeth are stupid. <gasps> oh, oh man. Wow. Yeah. Drag your ass. Your face I, is stupid. And I kept, sorry, what was that? I would have said, your face is stupid. <laughs> yeah, see, I didn't know what I could get away with, you know, because it's a little oh, kid. Yeah. Yep. It's, a, it's a little kid, you know. I didn't know the kid very well. If it was like, say, a kid in, in my immediate family, I'd uh, I'd have something sh cutting to say back to them. But this is a kid I didn't know that well. So all I said was, well, they're not mine. I'm, I'm holding them for somebody else. And she didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so there you go. We got things to do. Oh, I, I guess speaking of little kids, uh, real quick, um, the young people, they're a troubled group these days. As you know, I have a good pal who's a junior high teacher. I wouldn't take his gig for all the monies in the world. Mm -mm. Oh, uh, really? This is the guy. Oh, hell no. This is the guy I've told you about. He teaches math or something. Uh, oh, does he hate gym teachers. I've told you about him before. Oh, he hates the gym teachers. I wonder why. I always oh, like the you, gym teachers. He, he has a reason why. They just throw the ball out. <laughs> it, was a, it was a few New Year's Eves ago. We were hanging around at my house drinking. And I asked him, you know, how's work going? And he started, he just went off. He's one of these guys that on Friday, run into him on a Friday night. Oh, man, he goes off about his, his work frustrations. Some of it is the kids. Some of it is their parents. A small portion of it is his coworkers. You know, just like any other gig, 
you know, you have problems with your coworkers. But this one New Year's Eve, he started going off and, about gym teachers, and I wasn't really following it. And I said, well, so what's going on here? Gym teachers. I said, well, what? You don't like them? Not at all. And I said, why? <laughs> and he did this motion like he's rolling a ball. He goes, they just roll a ball out. That's all they do. <laughs> just roll it out. That's all they friggin' do. And they get paid the same as me. They just roll the ball out. Hates the gym teachers. Uh, do you guys know any teachers? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yep. I think Dana does. <laughs> <laughs> I, he, I live with one. He does. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have uh, two very good friends who are teachers. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of teacher friends. Here's the deal. One is very attractive, and the other one, he's tough to look at. Oh, so that uh, kind of evens out then. Yeah, there's Hot Paul, nice. which oh. you know, is right in the name. Is that the ugly yeah, one? Yeah, he's gorgeous. And then Mike, <laughs> Ooh, tough. I remember. Hot Paul's not even fair. He's ripped. He's hot. Yeah, he's a good-looking dude. I, I remember I Paul. Um, yeah, he's a nice guy. He's a teacher, huh? Yeah, yeah. He's uh, at a... Uh, at one your rival school, I, I believe it's why is that his rival? Who's Minnetonka? that? Oh, sure. Uh, at the high school, he probably knows some people that I know. A fourth grade teacher made a list of the 12 slang words not allowed in her class. Slang words. And everyone's uh, touching themselves and talking about this on that evil social media. Okay? I'm going to give this to you real quick. She wrote it on a whiteboard. These are the popular slang terms that she banned. And, uh, I mean, folks are picking on this gal because she she herself made a spelling error. Um, you know what's funny is Dana had sent this article, and Dana, you have a spelling error in the part where you're saying she got ripped on about a spelling error. <laughs> <laughs> that, that makes sense. <laughs> Take a look at what you wrote there. What, 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 what did he misspell? <laughs> Instead of error, he put air. Oh, nice. And got roasted for a hilarious spelling error. <laughs> so first off, the uh, yeah, the, um, the teacher's getting made fun of because at the top of her whiteboard where she wrote this list of banned slang terms, she wrote words that are not allowed, but she spelled allowed A-L-O-U-D. Oh. As opposed to A double L. And she's a teacher. Oh, I don't know how to spell the rest we of it. Make, we make mistakes. Uh, we, we all make, make mistakes. Yeah, everybody makes mistakes. She might the, be a math teacher. Yeah, that's not, true. Not in English. That's true, Waffle. Here are the damn uh, band slang terms. Some of them you've heard on this program from Josh. Skibbity. Sure, skibbity. Uh, stupid. Okay. Yep. Not all of them are slang terms, I guess. Shut up. <laughs> Can't say that in her fourth grade class. I've been around families like that where the kid mm -hmm. goes, where the kid says, I hate strawberries or something. And then the mother says, we don't say hate. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and I've always we thought. We say loathe. <laughs> <laughs> Detest. <laughs> and I've always said, well, what am I, what are we going to talk about if we don't talk about the things that we hate? We don't say hate in this family. Well, then I've got nothing to talk about. Uh, and I've been around families who won't allow their children to say, shut up. I guess I'm in favor of that one. Yeah, we, we always said don't say that. You can't say Jayat in uh, her Gyat. class. Gyat. Gyat. I'm sorry? Gyat. <laughs> you can't say. Gyat. You can't say Ohio. Um, do we know the background on that? Yeah, it's like if something sucks. Oh, really? Yeah. Can you use huh. it in a sentence? Uh, well, it used to be like Ohio Riz, um, and now it's like, that's so Ohio. At least that's the one I hear at home. Ohio is now... Um, yeah, like kind of like a, a, a Florida man, only an Ohio like type of thing. It's, oh. a, it's disparaging. Is it because Ohio just sucks? <laughs> I think it's... Well, I'm, there must be some yeah. uh, background there. Yes, I believe. I'm sure somebody can clear it up if that's not correct, but that's my understanding based huh. on listening to... Uh, to young people every single day with this comp when they talk back and forth like this. In this lady's fourth grade class, you're not allowed to say out loud grimace shake. Grimace shake. Uh, I wonder what the I, those grimace shake memes, if you call yeah. it that, are kind of funny. Those are hilarious. Yeah, they're uh, good. So based, you know the grimace shake. McDonald's came out with a grimace shake, right? Based on grimace. Uh, okay. Character. I'm not familiar with this. And uh, so you go, oh, hey, I'm going to take a sip of this grimace shake, basically, and then it cuts to you dead. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you're just covered in shake, and the people get real creative about the death. 
Okay. So I, I don't know how it started, why it exists, but it is kind of funny. <laughs> right, I, I so, saw one that was really good, and you just see Grimace at the end of a hallway, and yes. then the kid takes a sip of it, and then all of a sudden he's in front of his face <laughs> and then kills him. <laughs> I've seen that one awful. That's the best one. Um. Okay, so you can't say Riz, you can't say Snatch, you can't say English or Spanish. Yeah, English or Spanish. Why can't you say snatch? Well, it could oh. be a... <laughs> Take oh, a guess. friggin' wild I, I, guess. I really didn't think, yeah. What, did you, was, just, did you think... just come to from a concussion or well, something yeah, like that? I was, I was just thinking of the one way, like, snatch. I'm going to grab that from you. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I use that word in regular conversation. As, as soon as I said what I was saying, I was like, oh, boy. Jesus <laughs> criminy. Uh, what is? Why can't a kid say English or Spanish? Must be an inside uh, story. Uh, no, it's uh, so. I don't want to say. Yeah, it's oh, what English or Spanish? It's a thing. Yeah, it's a thing they that they've done. Okay. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, I just looked back. Uh, snatch isn't the word. It's snitch. snitch. Yeah. yeah, it's snitch. <laughs> okay. You can't say hate again. Uh, what are we going to talk about then? You can't say your trash. And you can't say dog water? Dog water. Give me it's the like, background on that that's one. That's like, oh, that's dog water. Like, it sucks. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. I don't know. I've had a little bit of my dog's water. Now and again, I thought it was quite refreshing. Yeah, when you're in a pinch. Actually, I've never had any of my dog's water. but uh, I have second hand. My... <laughs> uh, our dogs, for whatever reason, when they drink, the half of it is in their mouth, and oh. the other half falls out. And you know, if they jump up on you on the couch or something, every once in a while you get a little splash in your mouth, that's yep. pretty gross. Yeah. Uh, back in the day when the old Blue Goose was still in operation up in Garrison, we went ice fishing up there, and a buddy of mine got so friggin' drunk at the Blue Goose, and we were staying in a motel that night somewhere nearby, and we had a dog with us, and uh, uh, my buddy woke up middle of the night. He was so dry-mouthed and feeling horrible from all of his drinking that he drank out of the dog's water bowl because it was uh, the only thing close to his bed that would wet his whistle. Drank out of the dog water bowl. You had to be there. What time is it? Tell me what time it is. 6.07. The Blue Goose. Man, haven't heard of that in a long time. Ooh. Good times? Oh, yeah. Yep. My uh, my family's cabin was up in Crosby, so. Your family's Going cabin through. is dog water. Oh, oh, dude. How do you like that? Ouch. That was biting. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not how you want to start your Friday right there you know, when you get your ass kicked like that. All right, here's the deal. just taking the rest of the day off. <laughs> We've got uh, plenty to do today on this year Friday morning. Go buy some salve for that burn. <laughs> Randy That's Shaver, Ohio. Brad Ryder, Andrew DePaula, and a special guest uh, via a fresh edition of Who Dis. We'll take a break. Stupid news is on the way on the Half Ass Morning Show. Half Ass Morning Show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Our technicians are geared up and ready to make sure your system is running reliably this winter. Regular maintenance from standard heating and air conditioning helps prevent costlier breakdowns in the future, and we know they always happen at the worst time. Hey, Ashley here. Get your home ready for winter. Schedule your furnace tune-up with standard heating and air conditioning and save $30. Have a boiler? Save $40 on your boiler tune-up. Visit standardheating.com to book and lock in your savings. Stay cozy, stay ready. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Do you ever find yourself playing the budgeting game? Well, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive, you can find options that fit your budget and potentially lower your bills. Try it at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Not available in all states. Stupid news on the Half-Assed Morning Show. Yeah, we'll kick it in the ass right from the get-go here with the Stupid News Report. You know, Josh, back in high school, one of my best bros, he loved to draw giant winding penises in every textbook he could get his hands on. Josh, they were winding. Winding, even. Some of the dongs he drew in textbooks would stretch for multiple pages. You had to continue to flip (laughs) from one page to the next if you wanted to see the winding penis, to see where it would end. How good were they? Oh, very, 
very amateur and they? car, you know, childlike. Because oh. I mentioned he wasn't much of an artist, but he just he loved to. Um, the, I think the fancy word is uh, what do they call it? Uh, uh, Doodle? No, no, no. Uh, uh, I, I, I'll get it. Go ahead. You were saying something. So yeah, I mean, you got to remember for younger people, there wasn't the. It wasn't prolific, the availability of porn outside of magazines or something like that. So in high school, a buddy of mine, Mucho Grande, he's very talented in a lot of uh, evil arts. And one of those is he's great at drawing. And so people would commission him to draw custom pornography. Okay, right. <laughs> what a side hustle. <laughs> I know. He had several. He would take, uh, like, die-cast cars and make uh, smoking devices out of them. He, like oh, I nice. said, any evil talent he had. And so he could draw these. I mean, shoot crazy good. I mean, he had down to veins and sweat and everything. It was like you were looking in a medical journal. Yeah, and because it wasn't so prolific back veins then. Veins so, and sweat. Yeah, I mean, honestly, he every detail. <laughs> right? Mm, sweat. And you could choose, well, how, how would you like grooming? I mean, whatever you wanted, right? You could make, <laughs> make some selections. They were custom. I think you showed me some of his work and the, the dude... Yeah, he could have it's easily incredible. been a professional cartoonist, a professional... But he'd make like 50 bucks a picture. Because like I said, I mean, it wasn't as what easy to find What sucker was giving stuff. him $50 for a picture of veins and sweat? A lot. A lot. $50? Yeah, because whatever you were into, he would draw it. That is so cool. Oh, I, I would have given him maybe five. What's the, the, word, the word I can't come up with? Let's say I go out today and I spray paint a wall and the cops catch me. Graffiti. They'll, they'll charge me with... Oh, vandalism, vandalism is what I'm... Yes, my friend was not a talented artist, but he was very into vandalism. He loved to <laughs> spray paint walls, write on textbooks, carve uh, dirty words into desks. So thank you. I, I finally uh, was able to come around to the word vandalism. It was a lot of laughs opening up a textbook in high school and finding out that my bro had been there before you. So you could follow the winding penis <laughs> all the way to the... There's a big argument going on in a place called Fairview High School in Boulder, Colorado. A teacher by the name of Rebecca Roetto just lost her job because she drew her own cartoon peckers on some of her students' homework and such. What? That's pretty funny. What are you thinking, lady? <laughs> I would never expect something like that from the teacher. She's got to be a favorite teacher for sure. Before you wet your pants, Ashley, you know, I'll give you the full gist of this uh, operation. The big shots on the school board, they gassed her for inappropriate conduct. However, current and former students say that the school board doesn't know the whole story and that Mrs. Roetto is a damn good teacher that doesn't deserve to be canned. There was a big rally at a school board meeting recently. Boy, I'm sorry I missed that. But there was a big crowd at the school board meeting, supporters of Miss Roetto, and they raised all different levels of hell trying to get the gal her gig back. A former student said, there are real problems at that high school, and Miss Roetto is not one of them. She's the kindest, most supportive teacher that I've ever had. Wow, that's got to feel good to have your students talk about you like that. Sure. The lady taught a couple different things over at the school, something called wellness in action. I think we used to just call that health class back in the day. I could be wrong. Wellness in action. She also taught friggin' yoga and bowling. <laughs> Dude, this school sounds sweet. <laughs> A wide range. She held down that job for 20 damn years. So she's been accused of drawing peckers on 10 students' papers as a joke. What folks are missing, what her supporters are telling the school board, is on the day she drew the tallywhackers, students had shown up to the school early, 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 and drawn dongs all over the building, like a senior prank kind of a thing, right? So when everyone gets to school that morning, there's, as Josh would say, hogs drawn all over the school. <laughs> so later that day, Miss Roetto was looking to mark some homework or whatever for her students, like maybe a mark to indicate that she had graded the work 
And one of the students had a smart mouth comment and said, well, why don't you just draw a pecker on our homework? It seems to be the theme of the day or something along those lines. So she did. Ha ha. Everyone goes home a winner. But a school security guard saw one of the drawings and ratted her out. So the district called it misconduct and sexual harassment. And she lost her job. To cut to the chase, many students and even parents think the firing was garbage. They say Miss Rowetto is where it's at. And they're telling the school board to not be a flatliner about this. (laughs) Now that you know all the circumstances, it's silly that this lady would lose her job after 20 years for having a little bit of fun with the students. (laughs) Hearing these stories makes me wonder, like, if certain things got out, like when I was in high school, what my teachers did, like how many of them would have had a job for long? And it, it was nothing that was like, I, I guess, like bad, but it was little things like this. Like I had a teacher that would move, if you fell asleep in class, he'd move your desk outside the classroom or he would throw things at you. It, like, yeah, we all had those. And yeah. I don't think, like nowadays, I don't know if that'd be cool. <laughs> well, we had a teacher. Well, the throwing that- things probably wouldn't be cool, would it, Josh? Uh, no, and uh, I mentioned before our our um, science one of our science teachers. He was also the hockey coach. He was a very athletic guy, and he could throw a dry eraser at you from anywhere in the room and get you right between the eyes. That's awesome. I took one once. I took a dry from uh, for talking in class. I took, and I was very <laughs> impressed. Uh, you know, I, I think I had a concussion with how hard he could throw, but because the uh, you know it's got that uh, wood uh, handle, right? Got me right in the head. You're right. That probably would be an issue. We had a teacher, an old nun. I'd say she's probably in her late 70s, and she'd been there for years. Everybody loved her. She the one that would flash you guys? No, no. We never had one of those. (laughs) Never had one of those. But she would swear up and down. She had a dirty sense of humor, and people loved her for it. I mean, the staff, everybody. But you're you're right, Ashley. Nowadays, she'd probably be gone. I even had a teacher (laughs) at one point that... This kid, this awful kid, was in her face just, like, saying the nastiest things I've ever heard somebody say at that age. And she hauled off and slapped him, and she was, like, a hero for the next month. She she didn't lose her job. Nobody got mad. It was like, yeah, that that kid deserved to get hit. (laughs) Lots has changed. Love Boy, my f- you got to you gotta be careful if you're a teacher these days. I'll tell you what. I mean, you understand that being... uh, careful with the interactions right you hear some pretty bad stories and they're they're looking out for uh, their students but sometimes reason needs to sneak in a little bit and the particular instance needs to be taken into account it seems like it's just kind of a blanket thing yep you're right love my forerunner garbage hall and faith believe in jesus says is she hot yes she is is. she's very attractive who are we talking about just the teacher oh miss roetto oh i never looked her up i i hate myself She's a pretty lady. Mm-hmm. The soundest sleep I've ever had in my life was during class. Yeah, I can't believe you never got in trouble for that. Well, they, well, you would get in trouble. They'd give you a detention or whatever, but I didn't care because t- detention was a friggin' riot. I, I love. We would go to detention when we didn't have it in high school because it was a friggin' <laughs> riot. It was so much fun in detention. Um, yeah, I mean, teachers would try to wake me up, but I didn't care. Uh, what could they do? Um, but you were mentioning, Ashley, the teacher that would push you out into the hallway. Yeah. I once was so absolutely out cold in a ninth grade class. Oh, I was tired. Um, the teacher pulled my desk with me sleeping in it all the way out into the hallway, and I didn't wake up until the bell rang. Oh, <laughs> That's so Everyone's best. just passing yep. by and you're I just like no waking idea. up. No <laughs> idea where I was. You know, for a few yeah. seconds, like, what, what happened? Yeah. Huh? Oh, I love to sleep in class. I was the best at it. I'd pack my backpack with T-shirts and whatnot. So oh. it'd be a nice soft pillow. <laughs> That's oh, smart. Respect. Best in the business right here. I think the best thing that a teacher ever did when a kid was sleeping was he had the whole class get up and we all went outside 
And then we were at the window and like knocked on the window and we're waving at him when he woke up. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's, That's good. Fun. <laughs> Only poops while punched in. Jesus said he had a, geog- a geography teacher who would bounce a ceramic globe off your head oh. if you fell asleep. A ceramic <laughs> globe. Oh, I bet that hurt. Oh. Uh. Man. Oh, whole frog protection. Jesus said he went to a Catholic school and his parents signed a corporal punishment consent form. I don't, under, I don't <laughs> understand. What? You can do that. I, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, I didn't Whoa. know you could do can that. Can you explain well. that to me? What so happened? your parents are saying, hey, yeah, if you smack my kid, that's cool. Mm-hmm. You know, go ahead. If he's oh. out of line and okay. he has it coming, go ahead. Yeah, teachers didn't need to have that back we, in back in our day. They we could, got the ruler, yeah. Slap the living hell out of us. I thought it was hilarious. Oh, I loved it when one of my classmates would just get chin checked by the teacher. <laughs> Man. <laughs> chin, chin checked. <laughs> That's All great. right, let's see. Uh, let's uh, check in and see what's happening at the local sex spa over there in San Diego, California. Now, my neighborhood does not have a sex spa, as far as I know. Grew up in a neighborhood that had one. Who uh, who swung in and uh, what happened? Uh, there was a couple of them. Did your um, dad go over there? No, no, no. My dad never made it. Um, but we had one. It was, uh, I think they called it the Tiki Hut. And that thing got shut down, uh, I don't know, maybe a year after it opened. There, uh, there's, there's a rumored one kind of close to where we're at, a massage place. I don't know. Why don't you call a massage parlor? What movie Slapshot? That's awesome that you grew up with a sex spa in your neighborhood. Here's the deal. The owners of a full-on sex spa, uh, like I said, San Diego, California, they had to go to the local courthouse and pay out some monies. Because apparently the loud sounds of sex workers and clients hollering out in the throes of passion pissed off their neighbors. So they had to go to court and hand out a lot of money. Uh, This sounds like one hell of an interesting neighborhood. One of the sex spa's immediate neighbors is a church. Well, the tiki hut I was telling you about, I mean, not, not a church, but it was right next to a fire station. Right, so, uh, you know. That built-in customers right yeah. there. <laughs> I don't know about that, but it's right there. Oh, firemen love to go to sex spas. Uh, yeah, so in this neighborhood, there's a sex spa, and then right next door, a damn church. And apparently all the moaning and groaning and orgasm sounds pumping out of the sex spa interrupted a Bible study class <laughs> that was uh, happening over there at the church. So the sex spa had to cough up, I mean... Over half a million dollars to settle some civil criminal cases against them, not only for the noise violations, but for what they were doing behind closed doors at the journey. A buddy of mine's wife used to go to a Bible study, and she'd come home tipsy. I think it was just an excuse for girls to get together and drink wine. Like, <laughs> like a book club? It was pretty much like that, yeah. But awesome. it was just a good book. I mean, just go to the bar. Sorry, I, mean, I, I think it, it maybe takes the guilt out. I don't know. Okay. The cops in San Diego shut this spa smooth down. They call it uh, an illegal operation. A lawyer involved in this court case said, thanks to the diligent efforts of the San Diego Police Department, we've been able to shut down this illegal operation and restore peace to the neighborhood. Very dramatic. They called the sex spa a front for prostitution and a nuisance to neighbors. Well, damn. Here are some of the complaints that were made about the joint. People having sex in parked cars. You can go to a park and ride for that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's the only reason they have the park and rides. (laughs) People having sex in parked cars. Loud sexual noises. They also say the foxy ladies... Amen. Wow. I made a Good mess work. that night. <laughs> <laughs> I, if there was, if that was just like a little blooper, how disappointing would that be? Hey, you're expecting something pretty spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh, <laughs> dribbler. <laughs> made a terrible mess. Uh, I, Check uh, this a friend out. of mine was telling me he, he told he, he was talking a big game to his wife, like, "Oh, look out! Oh man, I got something for you here." And he said it was next to nothing, just a bang wow. flag, basically. Nothing came out, just air. 
<laughs> Dust. <laughs> after, after this big setup. Orgasms can be unpredictable. By the way, I had the name wrong. Thank you, Brotherhood. Uh, I, I, I thought it was called the Tiki Hut the, by the uh, place of ill repute by where I grew up. But was it, it instead called the Freaky Tiki? Nope, the oh. Bamboo Hut. That's right. Bamboo. bamboo. Um, another allegation against this sex spa was that the foxy ladies that work at the joint were trying to entice young dudes into coming on in even though they weren't underage. Hollering at the junior high kids. Hey, baby, come on in. You want a good time? Some kid with a backpack and a oh, no. lollipop in his <laughs> oh, mouth. I would have been so intimidated. Shoot, I probably would today. Workers propositioned undercover cops. It was a hell of a scene. Um, masturbation, oral sex, anal sex, woman on man, woman on woman, toys, double penetration, used condoms, KY jelly, handy wipes, Actually, all of that last information was taken from the Wikipedia page that details the Minnesota Vikings bang boat event from back in October of 2000 plus five. You can look it up yourself. I'm not kidding. Oh, that'd be fun. Starting with masturbation all the way to handy wipes. That wasn't anything to do with this sex spa. That was the bang boat. I'm telling you, you can look it up. Read a story about P. Diddy. I bet you get a few good oh. things in there, too. So much food. People keep bringing him up. What happened? Uh, he had lot. all the lube in yeah. uh, the northern hemisphere yep. at his house. He's, he's an <laughs> awful, awful, awful person, Nick. All the lube. If what he did, is, or he's accused of, he did, oh, he boy. should never get out of jail. Oh, God, help never us. Never see the light of day. I should look this up. <sighs> How many have upped and uh, hit the local opera house for a show? Anyone ever seen a live opera? No. Oh, I yes. saw Phantom of the Opera. I don't know if that counts. Phantom of the Opera. But, uh, which was excellent, by the way. Um, no, oh, yeah? I've never been to an opera. Yeah, we used to have to go to the Shane Hassan Dinner Theater, and they would do operas and stuff, and we would go for school. Are you sure, are you sure like that. that counts as an opera, the Chan Hassan Dinner Theater? Yeah, I was going to say. I don't know they, about that. I'm they did I'm, operas. I'm talking there. about the full-on, whoa, and all that's, the theatrics. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah. Fat gonna, lady, did she sing? She did. That's I'm going to have to go along over. with it. Uh, what were you <laughs> saying, Josh? You saw the uh, Phantom of the Phantom Opera. Phantom of the Opera. Uh, yeah. uh, like a national show? Uh, in Vegas, when uh, on my honeymoon, when my wife and I went to Vegas, there was a we wanted to go to a show, so we went to Phantom of the Opera. Who was the Phantom? Was it Paul Stanley? It was no nobody <laughs> famous. Was it Sebastian Bach? No, I would have loved to see that, though. I, I've seen that on YouTube. Because both I, of them played the Phantom yes. in a national big-time tour. Maybe uh, you got to go to New York or something for that. But Not my style. Uh, I'll tell you what, though. There's a new opera coming to the United States of America to put on a few shows, and apparently it's so damn nasty that folks have been running for the exits because they've just been made to be sick by the show. At one of their recent shows in the silly United Kingdom, 18 people needed medical treatment after the show was over with. I am intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> How can I get tickets? Yep. The story here calls it a, quote, radical feminist opera. It goes by the title of Sancta Susanna. And it tells the story, get ready now, it tells the story of a suppressed nun and her journey of self-discovery and sexuality. They had an episode of House like that. I don't know if you guys watched that show. Ever. Never saw it. Oh, I can't remember that one. The show features explicit lesbian scenes, mm -hmm. nudity, and this is my favorite part, and real injuries. Okay, this sounds sweet. Real injuries? <laughs> that part is certainly different. They need new cast members every single show. <laughs> I've seen lesbian <laughs> scenes before. I've seen nudity. Real injuries. So here's what you get to see at the show. That's true. It'd be a good show to be an understudy in, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know you're going to get on stage. All right, just biding my time. <laughs> biding my time. Depends on who you are, but this was too much for some folks. Says here in the show you get to see plenty of sex acts. Real and simulated blood, painful stunts, graphic portrayals of violence and nudity, naked performers, a crucifix-shaped sword, 
is thrust down an actress's throat. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. An actress portraying Jesus spanks a naked nun. Nuns rollerblade around the stage while naked. A nun has sex with Jesus. Someone has their skin cut off their body, and then the skin is fried on a stove. <laughs> it is rough. I, I looked at some photos and saw a couple videos, and it's, they're pretty graphic. Sounds like some of the South Park guys would come up with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching the trailer. Why is there a skateboard ramp? Because the rollerblading nuns. <laughs> you didn't hear me say rollerblading well, nuns? Yeah, but I, w I didn't expect them to be doing, like, uh, <laughs> McTwists and stuff like that, <laughs> you know? Now, this year, uh, opera was composed over 100 years ago. And everybody lost their minds while watching it. Then, too, someone decided to give it another run. The folks who ran out of the show in England uh, were treated, you know, the folks who ran up the aisles screaming, disgusted by what they had seen. Uh, they were treated for stress and excessive nausea. The show has classical music in there and also some metal, or as Rob Halford would say, metal. And not everybody hated it. Something different. Yeah, not for everybody, but I can see some people enjoying it. Boy, I remember a couple times getting a little sick with... Uh... Oh, I just lost it. The Jim Caviezel, where he plays Jesus and gets his... The Passion, passion. of the Cripes. Oh, oh, my oh boy. Did he get beat? He sure did. The Passion oh, oh boy. of my. the Cripes. I was not expecting that. You, I mean, you knew the story, right? You knew it was going to be bad, but... He took it, a beating. They went for it. I was wondering how it was going to end. <laughs> All right, this is fun for everybody involved. I think a lady who was grocery shopping was was reportedly knocked unconscious after a cauliflower fell on her head. <laughs> oh no! How how soft is this woman's skull? <laughs> uh, again, with the effing United Kingdom, I apologize that we spend so much time over there in the stupid news. I'm I'm so tired of hearing from these people. Well, they're so stupid. It's the stupid news. The gal goes by the name of Sammy May. Uh, she says she was a browsing a discount rack at a grocery store when suddenly a really large and heavy item fell down on top of her head. <laughs> and she says it knocked her the F out, like what Debo did to Red uh, when he asked for his bike back in the 1994 documentary called Friday. I sympathize with Red um, during that portion of the documentary because he said the bike was kind of like belonged to him and his dad. Both of them kind of wanted their bike back. And Debo said, What bike? And Red said, The beach cruiser, homie. Do, should I play the whole scene out or do you guys understand? <laughs> the beach cruiser. Anyway, the gal got knocked out kind of like Red did. She woke up on the floor of the grocery store. And she was nude. No, I'm kidding. She woke up on the floor of the grocery store and she came away from the deal, she says, with one of those concussions. I don't know if I'm buying this one. Who's Does with? Seem, Any, anyone with me? I, I don't know if I'm buying it. It does seem a little though. unlikely. Yeah, I don't believe Seems it. Seems like a frivolous lawsuit waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. It says here, ooh, one of those uh, also happened on Friday. Remember when Izell fell down in the grocery store? <laughs> yeah. And he said, I want 10000 but I'll settle for a pack of cigarettes. That was Izell <laughs> Friday, the documentary. <laughs> Everything uh, always comes back to Friday. Of course. <laughs> Uh, cauliflowers, they say, Josh, are normally around two pounds. Yeah, they're, they're very light. But yeah. this lady says the cauliflower fell between four and six feet before hitting her skull. So it built up some speed, some momentum before it slammed her in her English noggin. Now you need a mathematician. Oh, she's in big trouble here. She has a variety of symptoms. Neck pain, anxiety. She's unable to work. Is she afraid of cauliflower now? <laughs> She's considering legal action. Oh, that's a big surprise. I think I'd be kind of embarrassed if I got knocked out by a cauliflower and only fell four feet. Yeah. I kind of want to try it now. I like this part. She says the grocery store staff just put the cauliflower back on the shelf and they didn't treat the incident seriously at all. Because it's not, woman. Well, yeah, you're a grown person who got hit by a cauliflower. What are you? 
got knocked out. Well, you want to get them, have them airlift you to the hospital? You get. I'm not taking this one too seriously. Oh God! It seems a bit unlikely. But I guess you don't. You never know. You have to start wearing a helmet in the produce section from now on. <laughs> This is going to anger some people. I, I, I guarantee it. This angered me. A professional snitch. Well, maybe I shouldn't call him professional. He's not getting paid. But this is a kid, an 18-year-old kid. Now we're in friggin' Germany. God. You get angry. I just... <laughs> I, how come we can't ever hang out in the, in the States? Well, because... This kind of stuff doesn't happen to us. This doesn't, okay. An 18-year-old kid in Germany, he's taken it upon himself to be a professional snitch, a professional rat. And this sounds like a good way to get your parents' house teepeed. 18-year-old kid running around town. He goes by the name of Nicholas. He's become known as the reporting master. What a weak-ass nickname. We could do way better than that in the States. But anyway... He snitches to the friggin' cops every time he sees someone violating parking laws in his hometown. He rides his bicycle up and down the street looking for parking offenders. This guy is a true narc. When he spots illegally parked cars, he hauls out his little cellular telephone, takes a picture of the car, (laughs) sends the picture to the cops so these people can get a ticket. I'd like to think... The cops are like, all right, dude, just find something to do. They are. They are. What What do you do when your parents won't let you buy a car, or won't buy you a car? <laughs> you take it out on everybody else that has a car. That could be it. According to this kid, Nicholas, he's been behind over 4,000 police reports in the last year. He goes everywhere acting like this. Everywhere. He started in his hometown. Now he rides his little bicycle all over Germany with the same gimmick. Oh, there's a parking violation. Whoop, there's a parking violation. As you can imagine, he's not very popular. And there's been a few grown folks who have punched him in the mouth for this. Oh, I bet. He says all he wants is for parking rules to be respected and for those who refuse to comply and to be punished. (laughs) People think they can park however they want, he says. Even the mayor in this kid's hometown (laughs) is tired of the prick. He says his nonsense is getting in the way of actual police work in town because Lil Dinkus is always pumping the cop shop full of parking tickets. All day long, they're fielding little text messages from the kid. Okay, we get it. His own mother wants him to knock it off. (laughs) She does. She's in the story. She says, I'd like him to stop this. (laughs) For Christ's sake. Dude needs to move to New York and get a job as like a parking enforcement officer or something like that. You're right. At least get a job that's legit doing something. I've never heard of anything like this before. And the kid from the... I, I left out a lot of his comments. He's stubborn on this deal. He really says more or less, F you, park legally, and I'll leave you alone. Like, he's he's ready to go all all in. <laughs> Why is he so I, I don't know. I don't know. Did something happen to him? <laughs> I don't, it's got to be something like that. If this was my kid. Would you knock his ass off with a cauliflower? Dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to wrap him over the noggin with a cauliflower. I'm going to disable that bicycle, I'll tell you that. He's going to find that bicycle in pieces. (laughs) Yeah. Ah, we got to go. We'll be back uh, here in a minute with some sports. Sports. On the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Has to get it in. Find Stewart. Stewart for the tie. Misses the layup. And Minnesota with a miracle game one win. 95-93. Tell you what, the Lynx won game one of the WNBA final final in a very dramatic way. Largest comeback in WNBA finals history. They were down 15 with about four minutes left to play. They forced overtime. They took it from there. 
This was uh, crazy stuff. Uh, I didn't see it. I wish I would have. I wish I would have seen it. I turned it off in the first half, and they were down like 20. I was like, all right, well, punt and hope for game two. I got a, uh, what's the term again in the business? A text message. I got a text message from Catfishing Jesus. Um, This guy knows and loves basketball. Josh, I don't know if you knew this about Catfishing Jesus. He married a basketball. Did he really? It doesn't surprise me because you're right. He does know basketball as well. He married a basketball a few years ago. Uh, he had to. It was pregnant. He said, he said, the Lynx game last night was insane. One of the best basketball games I've ever watched, men's or women's. That's catfishing Jesus. Sorry, I missed it. Married a basketball. Yeah, yeah, I heard it was really good. I had um, a part of, like, uh, my, my softball team that I played some softball with this year that we have a group text together and the girls were blowing it up yesterday. One was like, oh, my gosh, I think I didn't breathe for a full five minutes. Drama. You might be dead. Pigs won the opener. They won the opener, beat the spray tan man and the Columbus Blue Jackets three nothing. It's pretty sweet. We'll cover baseball when the uh, when the rest of these uh, jagoffs uh, show up. Uh, Randy Shaver, Brad Ryder. It was a football game last night. Somebody won. Somebody lost. Big news concerning the Twins, for Christ's sake. Yeah. Oof. I'll tell you what. Coming up in a half hour. Like I said, Shaver, Ryder. We'll also talk to Andrew DePaula, long-ass snapper for the Minnesota Vikings. The son bitch is on vacation, but still agreed to come on and uh, chat with us. That probably means, boy, he's got very little going on in his personal life. <laughs> Guy's on vacation, still wants to wake up and talk to us. Uh, well, you know, he's got a new kid, right? So he's probably he, trying to get away from some Yeah, probably gives him a half hour to step outside of the house, you know? Yeah, he's, so a, he's awake anyway. Possibly one or two diapers he doesn't have to change. We'll talk to Andrew DePaula. And then uh, Randy Shaver, Brad Ryder, going to try to guess who this is. We got another big shot calling us up later on. Randy Shaver, Brad Ryder will uh, get involved in another edition of Who Dis. Plenty more to talk about. Plenty more. But for now, we're going to cut to uh, Cubby's news coming up here in a few minutes. Half assed morning show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Our technicians are geared up and ready to make sure your system is running reliably this winter. Regular maintenance from standard heating and air conditioning helps prevent costlier breakdowns in the future, and we know they always happen at the worst time. Hey, Ashley here. Get your home ready for winter. Schedule your furnace tune-up with standard heating and air conditioning and save $30. Have a boiler? Save $40 on your boiler tune-up. Visit standardheating.com to book and lock in your savings. Stay cozy, stay ready. Check out the podcast that inspired Taylor Sheridan's latest series, Landman. There's a stretch of road in a oil-rich region of West Texas. This region of West Texas, known as the Permian Basin, is in the midst of the biggest oil boom in history. This is a story of roughnecks, billionaire wildcatters, and wannabe dreamers. My name is Christian Wallace. From Texas Monthly and Imperative Entertainment, this is Boomtown. Boomtown. Wherever you listen. I mean, we're seeing these kind of events on a daily basis, whether it's physical, verbal, or threatening actions every single day. Here's a sign of the times. Paramedics and EMTs in Hennepin County are facing threats and assaults almost daily. Disappointing data shows there's already been 241 incidents of threats and assaults against paramedics and EMTs this year, compared to 121 for all of last year. The EMS chief at Hennepin Healthcare said his crews received de-escalation and self-defense training, but the increase in mental health and drug addiction, along with working sometimes at crime scenes, has made things at times unsafe for ambulance teams. Ah, uh, man. Yeah, they're uh, dealing with dangerous junkies and whatnot, freaking out, that kind of a thing. You imagine? Hell, you guys are here to help. You're the experts. You could save my life. I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> A 38-year-old Michigan man's temper flared after a road worker honked to warn her co-workers that he'd driven out of control into their construction zone. According to the Oakland County Prosecutor's Office, the worker, a road commissioner inspector, was in a security truck keeping an eye on an unspecified construction zone when she spotted a driver cruising down the closed shoulder. The driver, later identified as Kenneth Oliver, plowed over construction cones and cut off another driver while trying to get back on the road. The worker, seeing this unfold, hit her horn and flipped on her lights to alert the road crew about the rogue driver. 
Oliver wasn't having it. He jumped out of his vehicle, stormed over to the worker, yelled and pounded on her truck. After being slapped with a careless driving charge, he sought revenge. A couple weeks later, he sent a threatening message to the Oakland County Road Commission social media account saying he'd beat the road worker to death, shoot her and her family, and he wrapped it up with the line, I got weapons. Whoa. Police do too, and they weren't intimidated. <laughs> Oliver was arrested and charged with malicious use of tel telecommunications devices. Because he got a ticket for clearly being in the wrong. Speaking of dangerous junkies. Yeah. Last Tuesday, uh, Tuesday, deputies in Thurston County, Washington, got a call about a suspect who poured gasoline on himself and stole a family car. They knew the suspect well. During a previous encounter, he tried to run them over with a bulldoze bulldozer wrecking a patrol car. So that's not an easy guy to forget. Thanks to their past run-ins, the deputies knew where to find him and tracked him down along with the stolen vehicle to one of his usual spots. The 39-year-old wouldn't cooperate, so they brought in a crisis negotiator. When that didn't work, they tried non-lethal measures, but the suspect still took off in the stolen car. During the chase, he turned around and crashed head-on into a canine patrol car. The crash was so bad, it tore the front tire off the patrol vehicle and flung it over 50 feet. Luckily, though the deputy was a bit sore, both he and the canine were fine. Jeez. He tried to run him over with a bulldozer, and he was out of jail. Mm. It's not good. He, he probably hold like, him a little bit longer than that. He smelled like gas, though, Wobble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you like that. I do like that. Passed out in your work vehicle is no way to go through life, Mr. Police Officer. A 35-year-old Mississippi cop's in trouble after being found out passed out cold in his patrol car with some illegal stuff on him. According to police, Officer James Jackson was arrested over the weekend with a meth pipe in his hand while asleep while Ooh. sitting in his police car. Meth rocks, huh? And apparently he really liked to party in the patrol vehicle. They also found marijuana in the glove box. It was a few years ago in Aurora, Colorado, Officer Nate Meyer was found passed out drunk in his police vehicle. He also liked to party to the point of a blood alcohol level of 0.43. I don't know about my cops smoking meth rocks. I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather leave that to someone else, I think. A suspicious package found outside a Baltimore news station Tuesday afternoon uh, noon, turned out to be a real stinker, quite literally. Somebody dumped a toilet bowl right outside the station. Baltimore police responded to a suspicious package uh, call just before 5.30 p.m. After doing their duty, the city's bomb squad determined the toilet bowl wasn't a safety concern, just kind of gross. A criminal summons was issued for 64-year-old Dwayne Davis. No word, however, on why he left the toilet in front of the station. He's trying to give him a gift. There's been several odd and humorous incidents involving suspicious packages or objects which turned out to be harmless, much like the toilet bowl in Baltimore. Here's a couple. Police in Albuquerque were called to investigate a suspicious package at a gas station in 2021. After the bomb squad was deployed, they discovered the threat was actually a burrito wrapped in foil. <laughs> the area was evacuated for hours. Fortunately, however, it was just the misplaced lunch. In 2007, Boston, a whole highway was shut down after a thermos left on a guardrail started beeping. The bomb squad was called in to investigate, only to find out it was an old coffee thermos with a malfunctioning battery-operated warmer attached. The incident caused a major traffic jam. <laughs> and, and, of course, there's been many, many, many emergency calls about dead bodies, which turned out to be nothing more than a well-humped sex doll discarded in a public place. I got to know about, about these uh, battery-operated <laughs> warmers in my thermos. I've seen those for coffee cups. Oh, yeah, those are sweet. That mm -hmm. is funny. There's plenty of things that can make a flight unpleasant, but having the pilot die mid-flight has to be pretty high on that list. A 59-year-old Turkish Airlines pilot passed away during a flight, sadly, forcing the co-pilot to make an emergency landing early yesterday morning in New York. I hope that some bitch knew what he was doing. Uh, the pilot, I'm sorry, it was, this was earlier this week. I didn't get to this yesterday. The pilot fainted during the flight, and when medical intervention on the plane was ineffective, the co-pilot made the call to land. Sadly, that pilot didn't make it. The Airbus A350 had taken off from Seattle Tuesday, headed for Istanbul before everything unfolded mid-flight. 
Unfortunately and quite terrifyingly, there's been several instances over the years where pilots have tragically died or became incapacitated mid-flight, forcing the co-pilot or another crew member to take control. On October 5, 2015, the captain of an American Airlines flight from Phoenix to Boston died. The 57-year-old pilot passed away due to illness, and the co-pilot was forced to land the Airbus A320. Oh, did he have the fish? Didn't say. <laughs> On June 18th, 2009, a captain of a Continental Airlines Boeing 777 died mid-flight during, during a, uh, he had a heart attack while ah. flying from Brussels to Newark. The co-pilot and a relief pilot took control of the plane. And uh, as Nick referenced in the movie Airplane, both the pilot and co-pilot, an inflatable autopilot named Otto, became incapacitated after eating bad fish. And then in Snakes on a Plane, when the pilot <laughs> is killed by snakes, Passengers and crews tried to figure out how to land the plane safely and survive the snakes that are on the plane. That was such a ridiculous movie. Uh, do you think how when so? This, <laughs> do you think when this happens, do they they let people know that are on the plane, or they just are like, uh, let's let's not tell them? Because I imagine it would be chaos. I would they think they wouldn't know. say a darn thing. No, yeah, they no, wouldn't they tell they anyone. Know. Hey, just so you know, pilot died. Uh, we're good, though. I mean, and imagine, like, finding that out afterwards. Like, oh, my God, what? I think I'd rather find it out afterwards. Yes. Oh, yes. Given Telling the all the people making a panic, that's making a big problem even worse. Oh, and then when you, the, you start landing, everyone would just freak out. <laughs> Dying at work, right, Cubby? Yeah, it's the worst. What a nightmare. A 56-year-old Texas man flying on a fire suppression plane in northern Minnesota walked away with just minor injuries after crashing into a lake. According to the Cass County Sheriff's Office, it happened at 2.08 p.m. Tuesday. Luckily, witnesses were able to pull the pilot from the wreckage. He was treated on the spot for minor injuries and presumably offered a clean pair of undies. The Sheriff's Office said the plane, contracted by the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources, was on a routine proficiency flight to meet monthly flight hour requirements when it went down, which they tell me is not routine or an example of proficiency. The investigation is ongoing. But that was pretty scary for the fella. A 36-year-old man found himself in serious trouble after a small plane made an emergency landing on a California highway. Troy Smith, one of the passengers, is accused of tossing over two pounds of cocaine right in front of police as they arrived on scene. The cocaine plane flying from Arizona to California had engine trouble over the Pacific. The pilot initially thought they might have to crash into the ocean, but they managed to make a safe landing on a highway without anyone getting hurt. Just, uh, just this character's luck. Yeah, he's moving some blow from town to town, and the friggin' plane goes down. Yeah, somebody <laughs> didn't uh, check it for gas or something. Mm -hmm. On the ground, police noticed Smith unzipping a backpack and stashing a package in the bushes. That package turned out to be full of cocaine. And it turns out Smith was already on the DEA's radar. Even before the plane incident, though, Smith was already under investigation by the DEA and post office for accusations he was shipping drugs in the mail from Oceanside to different parts of the U.S. Oceanside police said while the drug bust wasn't a huge surprise, the emergency landing definitely was. And while the emergency landing in California unfolded with a surprising drug bust, another dramatic scene was playing out in Minnesota one that involved a high-speed chase and stolen vehicle at MSP. Suspects in the stolen vehicle led police on a chase, which ended at the airport Wednesday night. Airport officials tell us three people were in a stolen vehicle from Egan. Two of the people were taken into custody on the silver ramp at the airport. The other person was found just outside the ramp. Airport officials say police were chasing that vehicle, reportedly stolen, as she said, from Egan. Also in Egan, a death-defying rescue operation. It was launched by authorities after a man, clearly not afraid of heights, climbed to the top of a 250-foot radio tower. The unusual emergency unfolded yesterday morning with police saying a guy scaled the Salem Media Group tower off Cliff Road. The tower climb sparked a response from various emergency services, including the Dakota County Special Operations Team, which used a high-angle rope rescue to bring him down. Pictures shared by the Egan Police Department show a rescuer climbing the tower to reach the man, later identified as a 51-year-old from Moorhead, Jesus. and bringing him safely to the ground. Man, that's nice to be younger than 51. <laughs> he will be charged with trespassing, most likely. You think, though, uh, the folks involved in res rescuing that guy, you think they want to do that again? <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. Next time, just put a blanket down on the ground with a red X on it. <laughs> the guy was, uh, yeah, and then maybe he'd win a prize since it was a radio station. <laughs> <laughs> Hit the X and you win a prize. Just put a red X on a blanket and say, aim for this, dude. We're not crawling up there after your ass again. That's the old 93X location right there.
Is that right? The original 93X. Yeah. Uh, where was it again? In Egan off of Cliff Road. Oh, yeah, yeah. I used to. That was that was the first building I ever wandered into uh, 29 whatever years ago. You're right. I forgot about that. What a nightmare drive that was for me. Oh, I'd love that drive right now. It would be perfect. <laughs> we, could, we could hit Chipotle every day. It's a known fact that every time Dana eats Cheetos, his wiener turns orange for some reason. <laughs> but there's more to Cheetos than just orange fingers and wieners. A surprising new study reveals that a food dye in Cheetos called tartrazine can actually make mouse skin temporarily transparent. The unexpected discovery could open up new ways to studying living animals without surgery, which could be a game changer for science. The study, published last month, shows that the yellow dye, commonly found in snacks like Cheetos and Doritos, slows light enough to make skin translucent when applied to shaved mice. Researchers were able to see things like beating hearts, and working digestive systems in real time you know, without invasive procedures. What's even crazier is how quickly it works. Once the dye is applied to the mouse's skin, it creates a window into their body, letting scientists observe organs and even neurons firing in the brain. Whoa. The study didn't find any side effects in the mice, and their skin went back to normal once the dye was washed off. This is so cool. Well, look what I brought for you this morning. Some tartrazine? Well, yeah, I guess uh, I brought in all my uh, little uh, snack pack Cheeto bags from the house because for whatever reason, me and the uh, friggin' wife, we love to eat Doritos and potato chips and all that. We just never go through Cheetos for whatever reason. Oh, really? Oh, I love Cheetos. I'm I, so here, you, you guys, you, you remember I brought some in a few months ago, right? Yeah, yeah. I think I almost ate every single bag. I brought bag another. Uh, I, brought I had a... some for a while, but they started to get old, Wobble. <laughs> oh, no, they did not. I got another 10, 12 bags over here for you. So uh, have bring those home. Um, you know, get a mouse. Wobble, I'm going to drop you down a well and make you put the Cheeto on its skin. Ooh. <laughs> I want to apply some tartrazine to Chris Hockey from K-Fan's entire wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take Whoa. a look at that whenever I want. Now in theaters, Saturday night. Wow. Tensions run high as producer Lauren Michaels and a troupe of young comedians and writers prepare for the first broadcast of Saturday Night Live on today's date, October 11th, 1975. Also in theaters this week, get in the Halloween and Christmas mood with Terrifier 3. Art the Clown is set to unleash chaos on the unsuspecting residents of Miles County as they peacefully drift to sleep on Christmas Eve. Streaming now on Apple TV Plus, Disclaimer, starring Kate Blanchett, Kevin Klein, Sasha Baron Cohen. When an intriguing novel appears at the bedside of a journalist whose career's been built on revealing transgressions, she's horrified to realize she's the key character in a long-buried story, which exposes her darkest secret. Wolves point guard Mike Connolly Jr. turns 37 today. He's on my wife's bucket list, don't you know? What a great player and a, and a great guy. Shout out to Pickle in the Night Jesus from your best man out for a rip, Jesus, who says, Tomorrow is the day, slut. Happy birthday to I'll Try Anything Four Times Jesus from his smoking hot fiance, always running into things, Jesus, who hmm. says, She can't wait to run into you later if you know what she Whoa. means. <laughs> Happy 48th to the best dad in the world from Bod the Builder, Jesus. Happy birthday to Craig, a.k.a. Amputated Penis Finger, Jesus, from the Wife Ski Shop, Jesus. Conspiracy Theory, Jesus, text in a double happy birthday shout-out to his beautiful girls, Ram Tucky, Jesus, and little Carly Lou, and that's 93X News. Coming up next, we've got a who this, and we'll talk with Andrew DePaula of the Minnesota Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings interview. That's more encroachment when you go that far. You go what, 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 what? That's more than encroachment. Touchdown! Vikings win it! On the half assed morning show. I'm not gonna expect to hear that. That kind of breaks my heart. It makes me nervous, to be honest, because I don't want them to go anywhere else, and I also don't want to lose the spirit of the twins. Yeah, we'll get to that. That's uh, regular folks on the street talking about the big news involving the Minnesota Twins with the poll ads. They're going to sell the friggin' ball club. We'll get to that in a minute. Good morning, Randy Shaver and Brad F. and Ryder. Good morning. Good morning. A lot of stuff going on. There is a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to watch on TV last night, that's for sure. And I was prepared yeah. to give zero Fs, you know, like the young people say. <laughs> um, I no was prepared. Fs to give. No Fs to be had or however they say it. That's that's the route I was prepared to take this morning. But then all these things started happening. 
Um, we'll get to the Twins news in just a minute or two. Waiting on the telephone is uh, our guy Andrew DePaula from the Minnesota Vikings, even willing to give us a friggin' phone call when he's on vacation. Hello, Andrew. Hey, good morning. Working on your day off. Thank you for that. Hey, well, anything for you guys. Oh. <laughs> oh. What a sweetheart he is. Are you calling from, uh, you know, over in uh, Maryland? the bagel shop? Yeah, bagel shop. Not at the bagel shop, but I am in Maryland. You're in Maryland visiting your family. Well, thank you very much for calling. Tell yeah. us uh, tell us everything about London, England. Did you enjoy it? Um, yeah. I mean, you know, the trip is the trip is harsh. I'm not going to lie. That yeah. like 8-hour flight there and then, you know, we're there like um gosh, for we get there Friday morning. So like we're basically in and out and once you land, we land at like 8.30 in the morning, I think, London London time. And then they want us to be up the entire uh, day for Friday. You know, don't take a nap. Don't go to sleep. Stay up, practice. Right, to, meetings, to, uh, like, to accustom you to the uh, new time and everything. So they, they force you to store. Are they filling you full of coffee and whatnot? How do they? <laughs> oh, yeah, there's caffeine, coffee everywhere. Yeah. They're just, here, take this, drink this, drink this. Yeah, I think it was coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it worked? I mean, did you? Did it seem to pan out? Uh, like staying up, you mean? Yeah, I mean, did was it a good call on their part, or would you think you would have been better off with a nap? No, I, I think that was a good call, like in the long run, because um, you. I'm not saying you get adjusted to the time zone, but I think you just feel like. I don't know, mentally, you're like, well, this isn't, like, terrible, you know, because by Saturday, once I slept, I slept, like, 11 or 12 hours Friday night. So Saturday I woke up, and I was like, oh, I feel pretty good. And that was the consensus with the rest of the team. Everybody was like, no, oh, we feel good. Like, no big deal. Play this game tomorrow and get out of here. So I think, I think, it was, I think it's a good call. We did the same thing two years ago, and it worked out well. All right. Boy, did it feel yeah. any different with the fans? Were they any different, or did it feel like uh, any other game? The fans in London? Yeah. Yeah, they were way different. <laughs> like, what, what made way them different? different? Like, I, I don't know if they fully understand the game of football, like the tiny little ins and outs, you know, right. um, as well as American fans. Like, they were just super excited to see us, see a game there, um, see the players, and then they were just constantly cheering. I don't even know if they knew what they were cheering for. No, they, they, <laughs> they seem to be. Boy, and I'll tell you what, when, when they played Oasis a couple times in the stadium, that got loud, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, there were a couple songs I think that they played that they just lost their mind to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it was, it, was, it was a fun. It was fun. It's a different atmosphere than playing you know, here in, in, in America, but it was cool. It was really neat. They, uh, yeah, they probably don't really understand what it is they're seeing. They're just uh, hammered off their asses and, and hollering um, just uh, out of excitement. Uh, it's got to be a hellish trip, though. You know, I, I hate those airplane rides. Eight hours there, eight hours back. Uh, it's got to be tough. What is, uh, we've probably shared or uh, asked you this before, and, and I, I, I forget things so easily. What is your greatest uh, adventure you've ever had on an airplane? My greatest adventure I've ever had on an airplane. <laughs> what does that mean? What, yeah, what are you setting him up for? Mile high. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, we've all had some are crazy. Talking... We've all had some crazy, or maybe we haven't all had some dramatic, you know, frightening moments on an oh, airplane. Okay, no, all never. right. Okay. I saved a friend from rotting in a Jamaican jail or go going to Guantanamo once. Well, yeah, you did. Um, we're not going to talk about who that friend was. It was a particular person that, uh, yeah, shortly after September 11th, I, had some had a mix of substances that wasn't recommended. <laughs> was a bit out of character. <laughs> of course, Randy Shaver. I wasn't asking him if he's ever if he's ever boned a woman in the bathroom. I, I'm, uh, we we know Andrew DePaul a little bit. I don't know him that well. I'm, I'm I'm obviously looking for. I mean, the guy travels on an airplane all the time. You must right. have had one of those. Oh God, we're not going to make it. Or oh no, someone <laughs> diarrheaed on the floor. Oh, a lot of our uh, stories here on this show, especially in the last few years, Josh, right, involve airplane catastrophes, just drunken this and that. So if you don't you have any stories. those shows. Yeah. Airplane disasters. Oh, like that. <laughs> if you don't have one of those stories, that's okay, Andrew. I was just uh, curious. 
No, the so the, the nothing like crazy. Like I didn't think like we were gonna make it or or anything like that. Probably the the weirdest, like worst flight for me personally um, was in twenty twenty eighteen. I got on a flight to go sign my contract with the Raiders. So I flew from Tampa to San Francisco. Oh man, that's a um, punk. But I didn't know. I just kind of had like. I was real stuffy, you know, like real congested. Yeah. I didn't know I had a sinus infection. So I get on the airplane, we take off, right? And as we're going up, the pressure is just crushing my head. Oh. And I'm in, I'm in immense pain. I'm like, this is, this is terrible. Well, on the way, as we're ascending, on the way up, we hit a flock of birds oh. that actually clog and mess up like a bunch of sensors. And so the pilot, like, gets on. He tells us what's going on. He's like, hey, like, the plane is operational, but we just don't think it's safe to fly cross-country. However, we were fueled for six hours of flight time, like, uh, to fly to San Francisco. (laughs) Yeah. So he's like, also, we're too heavy to land. So we just flew in circles for, like, (laughs) two and a half, three hours. Oh, Oh, my God. Oh, that's brutal. And so my head is just getting crushed. Like I, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm miserable. Like I'm like, you know what? I don't care where you land this plane. Just land this plane. So oh. we land back in Tampa. Um, again, the deep, the, 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 the descend was terrible. Again, crushing my head. Um, we land. My agent's calling me. He's like, "What's going on? What's going on?" I'm like, "Dude, I don't even know. Like, my head is killing me. All I know is we hit some birds talking to him." <laughs> um, at this point, I had like two other teams calling me because they're like, "Hey, you never flew out to Oakland. Like, we want you to sign with us." And I'm like, "Listen, man. Like, I can't think right now. Uh, talk to my agent." So anyway, they find us another flight. Uh, I get on that one, probably like two or three hours later. Um, same thing, just the entire flight. My head was just getting crushed. Um, you know, not to go into too much detail, but I think I threw up like 12 times on the airplane oh, over to God. San Francisco. God. Damn. And then once we landed, the Raiders like aren't worth that. <laughs> <laughs> once we landed, they had like a car waiting for me. And I just, I was texting the driver like, dude, you need to give me like 30 minutes. Like I can't. I can't walk. I can't really see straight. Um, that was that was the worst plane experience. Oh, wow, that's a great story. Life. That's a wow. great, miserable, but wow. a great story. Did I thought you were going to tell your agent to find a team closer to Tampa, so you wouldn't have to fly all the way to Oak. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the, the, that crossed my mind. Yeah. Crossed my mind. <laughs> the cabin pressure and whatnot. You just felt like your skull was going to pop. Oh, oh yeah. Now, yep. I, I've had some real adventures on airplanes. Um, I was on the same airplane that Josh was when that friend of his went nuts on drugs and, and hard alcohol. <laughs> Something to see, I bet. Uh, and should have gone to Guantanamo Bay. I, I, I was there for that, too. Yeah, one of us remembers it. Right. Um, <laughs> but you know what? I, there's one that I forget to tell. Um, but uh, maybe Andrew will enjoy this. Uh, many, many years ago, before Josh and I started working together on the radio, um, I was forced, me and my partner at the time, we were forced to go through with an underwater broadcast. (laughs) So lame. What in the world? Now that's how you know you're struggling in the ratings. (laughs) I love radio. If you ever hear a radio team broadcasting while being buried alive or an underwater <laughs> broadcast or uh, you know they are on the verge of a uh, total Getting disaster fired. yeah they're gonna be buried alive <laughs> we went through with an underwater broadcast where well, we did broadcast underwater for a day and a half or something like that it was horrible um I, I really did enjoy uh, the guy that I was working with at the time. So we made the best of it, but it was just miserable. People could pull into a mall parking lot and look at us as we, <laughs> as we were submerged in this friggin' fish tank while broadcasting. Just horrible. I, 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 I'll never forgive some of our bosses from years <laughs> gone by for some of these. Ter- but anyway, so after immediately after the broadcast was over, I was set to get on one of those airplanes and go down to Mississippi. And I'm, I think I was on my way to the airport when a friend of mine called me and said, you can't get on that airplane. And I said, what are you talking about? And they told me that 
the the difference in pressure between being underwater and then being 30,000 feet in the air can kill you unless you give it a certain amount of time between the two. Do you understand the words that yeah. are coming out of yeah. it? It's yeah. like has something to do with like the bends, I think people call it. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll go along with it. I had never heard of this. I was like a 26-year-old kid. I think it was only my third or fourth airplane ride at the time. And I was horrified, but I had to get on that airplane and get to... So you should have seen how hard I was gripping that chair when we took off because I was convinced that my lungs were going to explode or something yeah. because of the... Some, can someone look that up? Was that a true story I was hearing? They said something about the difference between the pressure in your body when you're underwater and then the pressure when you get... Well, I thought, well, that's it for me. So I do know there's something called the bends, and it's decompression sickness. Hello? It's when you come up too fast. Yes, I've heard of that. I've heard of that, Ashley. Yep. You, when you come up too fast, it happens to fish, doesn't it? <laughs> right, uh, right? I'm not sure, but I know oh, what happens I, to, like, I didn't know scuba what happened divers to fish. and such. Okay, anyway, if, if, okay. if someone has the time to look it up, you know. I thought that I would just pop. Your head explodes. Yes, my lungs yeah. or my head would. That's I wouldn't so think scary. that tank cause it would uh, be that much pressure, but maybe. Right, right. Oh, wait, you still got on the plane? Yes, I did. Why? He's a bad guy. <laughs> it's Mississippi. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Probably for a piece of ass, uh, is my guess, you Andrew DePaul. You, you mentioned you We mentioned Tampa, Florida now. When you played for the Buccaneers, um, do you have any family or friends down there in Florida that uh, you've been in communication with? They've gone through hell down there. Yeah, I had a bunch of friends down there still. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not a place you want to be currently. They're doing okay? Uh, yeah, most of them are doing okay. I think uh, I have a couple friends that are a little more inland. The only thing that they were worried about was the tornadoes. Yeah. Um, and then I've got a bunch of friends that still live in, like, Tampa, South Tampa area. They all evacuated, so they're all fine. When you, when you were playing down there, did you ever have to get the hell out of town because of a storm like that? Um, trying to think. No, no, I don't, I don't think I, when I was there, there was really anything that came through. Um, that was really terrible. It was funny, not funny, but in 2017, I was cut by the Bucks, and then I was claimed by the Bears. So I went to Chicago, and I left my wife in Tampa. She had to deal with one, but I was in Chicago, so I didn't have to deal with it. Uh. <laughs> Is there any of us that would move there for any amount of money right now? Nope. No, thank you. No. Absolutely no. not. Nope. Man, we talked yesterday about the the lid got torn off the baseball stadium down there in Tampa. Oh, just incredible pictures. My uh, sister-in-law, my wife's sister, is a, is a police officer down in Tampa. And so the last couple of weeks have been interesting hearing stories from her. And they, they've they been displaced, and they're not sure when they're going to be able to get back home either. That's Ooh. unbelievable. Yeah, I've got some friends down there, and they're, they're all doing okay. It's not yeah. pretty, but they're doing right. okay. And they couldn't leave because... It, being a police officer, she had to stay. Right. So, yeah. Right. Well, I suppose, yeah, yeah, they got a job to do. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, I think the last time we talked to you a couple weeks ago, I think you and uh, your kicker friend uh, were heading off to the Twins game. Did you guys get to throw out the first pitch? If uh, is, am, am I uh, telling a true story here? No, no, we didn't. We didn't throw out the first pitch. We oh, just, just we just enjoyed the game like regular fans. Oh, I thought maybe it was a special occasion. Did they, you have plenty of room? <laughs> He had his own section. <laughs> actually, it was it, we we were joking about that walking to the game, but actually it was like pretty pretty full. I mean, it wasn't like full full, but like there was a good amount of people there, a lot more than we thought. Huh? Does baseball hold your attention? You you, you like to watch baseball? Yeah, yeah, I enjoy baseball. Yeah. Did Will have to pay for a kid's ticket or an adult <laughs> ticket? <laughs> <laughs> he did. Funny enough, he did get recognized actually for. Oh, wow. For being himself, not being a not, not being a child. <laughs> <laughs> be great. It'd be it would, great if they had one of those twelve and under giveaways where they give him like school supplies or something. <laughs> He's just there eating a helmet Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would have gotten him going. <laughs> a, a big all day sucker and a helmet Sunday. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, 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 your kicker uh, Will uh, Reichard. Uh, you guys went off to the baseball game. I'm glad you had a good time. Yeah, last time you were on, 
uh, we had Will on with you. Uh, did he say good mm -hmm. thing? Did he say good things about the experience, or did he say, "Hey, man, thanks for dragging me into that nightmare"? <laughs> <laughs> no, he did. After he got off, he was like, "You know, he's like that was cool. He's like I really liked that. I enjoyed it. That's cool. He's welcome I was back. Like, good. That's cool. And he still he hasn't missed any kicks yet, has he? He's uh, he's no. still got all his hair. Uh, as far as I know, yeah, yeah. as far as I know. He. Uh, Oh, by the way, back to Tampa Bay and the problems they had down there. I read that uh, you, you played with Tom Brady down there, didn't you, Andrew? No, no. Nope. Oh, okay. Well, uh, another former Buccaneer, Tom Brady, donated a bunch of money down there. Did you have the number in front of you, John? It was like 100 grand. Is that what it was? Yep. Threw some money down there for the folks. Speaking of money, uh, you're not a singer, are you, Andrew? Uh, not in front of people. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when's the next time you guys play on Sunday night football? Maybe you, you probably don't know. Maybe someone can look that up for you. Sunday night football. What is this now? Uh, Carrie Underwood is paid. Oh, a, yeah. Carrie Underwood is paid a million dollars every time the theme from NBC's Sunday night football plays. Now, that's the gig we should have gotten ourselves involved oh, in. Oh, yeah. And she tapes all of them before the season starts. <laughs> so. so cool. She gets paid $18 million for the wow for the duration of all the songs for every week. Man. It's not a bad day's work. No. no. Isn't that crazy? She gets paid $18 million just to do the Sunday night intro song, and the performer at the Super Bowl does, gets paid nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's got the better deal. Yeah. yeah, how's that work? <laughs> I'm not sure, but... You're right. Randy Shaver was right. She has to pre-tape every game and then every playoff scenario. So she pre-tapes this way ahead of time. So she has to sing about it's going to be the Panthers and the Cardinals or something, <laughs> even if there's... I don't think she'll have to sing that one. Well, no, well. <laughs> no, I, I, I thought she does. Like way before. I, I, I don't. I don't think they do every possible scenario. She may do. They may add the pictures, but she may do like it's the semi. It's the, you know, the NFC Championship. Or no, here, here's whatnot. a quote wild from. It's Wild Card Week, and they don't do anything past the Wild Card. Here, NBC doesn't. Here's a quote from, uh, what's her name again? I just said it. Carrie Underwood. Carrie Underwood. I sing every possible combination of teams that could possibly play each other in the playoffs. Even, even, even though I'm thinking, I know this team isn't going to make the playoffs. Well, she probably has to sing every team, but then they combine the... The team. Well, whatever. If they're going to give me yeah. eighteen million dollars in trade, I'll sing whatever you want me to sing. Yep. Right. Probably tape that a few weeks before the playoffs start. All right. I don't think so. I think they tape before the season. Yeah, I thought it was before the season. They did everything. God, yeah, not a bad right. gig. Hmm. So if, if they if they personalize the Sunday night games, what happens like if a game gets flexed? Mm. Well, that's true. They I, I don't throw know it in the garbage. For that. <laughs> Throw they, that version they splice the up the teams and take her yeah, cut I, from you know when she said Vikings and take her cut yeah, from she, when she said the other team. I guess when she does the teams for the playoffs, maybe they splice those yeah. up to to make it work. I don't know. All right. So when uh, when are you back to work, Andrew? And uh, what <laughs> what kind of fun do you think you can squeeze in up until then? To uh, Monday, we start back up Monday. We've got meetings and practice on Monday. Um, I'm trying to not do anything fun. I'm trying to relax, chase my kids around, and do as little as possible. You know, every, meeting, you. every meeting we have here, at the end of it, somebody always says, well, that could have been an email. Have you ever thought that in one of your, <laughs> your meetings? Oh, man, more than I care to admit. <laughs> I was wondering if maybe yours were more exciting or something. But no, it's just like the rest of us. <laughs> that could have been an email. <laughs> Well, and then when you get back to work, you're prepping yourselves, I think, at that point for the Detroit Lions, and uh, they're a very mm -hmm. good ball club. So, yep, they are. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of practicing and uh, studying and this and that. Well, enjoy the rest of your time off. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy Plan on the, the kids and say hi to your folks and everything out yeah. there in Maryland, and uh, as usual, we appreciate you hanging out with us, Andrew. Yeah, as always, guys. Thank you so much. Love being on it, and I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Sounds Thanks, good. Broski. Thanks, man. You know, Barstow, Barstow Jesus brings up a good point about uh, having to sing all the different combinations. Because of the script in the NFL, they know exactly which ones oh, to sing. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. 
Now, we have some time before our guest calls, correct? Yes. Yep. So, Randy Shaver, Brad Ryder, the Polad family's going to sell the Twins after 40 years of ownership. What do you yeah. make of this, by God? Well, I think it was a rough... Oh, God. Sorry. Oh. I think it was a rough year. It yeah. was... Uh, it's a... Um, it's a nightmare when it comes to trying to figure out how to get fans back after after the issues that they had off the field with the cable, uh, with the cutting the payroll, with not doing anything at the trading deadline. All of those things combined just led to some bad bad blood between ownership and the fans, and I think it was going to be really hard for them to get it back. Was there a rumor this was coming? I guess I, I didn't hear any. Apparently, apparently they decided in the summertime yeah, that they weren't coming it, back. Yeah. I, I will say it's not a complete surprise to me either because, and um, you know, I, I'd worked for them for six years, and back it was about a year and a half or two years ago. And I think I've mentioned this on here before, that if you work for – a, you know, a team for a certain amount of years, you're vested in their pension program. A couple of years ago, they basically came to all the former employees who had worked for them for a certain amount of time and asked them if they wanted to, to roll over that pension or if they wanted to cash it out. And the, the reason I got privately at the time was that they were exploring, you know, because if, if you're going to sell the team, you want to right. unload all your assets like that quicker. And so it's not, it wasn't really a complete surprise to me today or yesterday because they had done that about a year and a half or so ago with a bunch of us who had worked for the team for a while. Huh. So the announcement was made by Joe Polad, who is, correct uh, me if I'm wrong, the grandson of Carl. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Carl bought the club from Calvin Griffith in 1984 for $44 yes, million. They're talking about how the Twins, when they are sold, could net more than $1.5 billion. Is anyone concerned about the new buyers wanting to take them anywhere? That's what no. I'm I don't think so. No. Not with the ballpark so situation they have, no. no. It's a 15-year no. lease oh, still at Target God. Field. Okay, that yeah. makes me feel good. No. Yeah, they're, yeah, not, I mean, they're not going anywhere. It wasn't anything that really entered my mind. I was just concerned maybe I'm think, missing something. I think the biggest concern is will somebody buy the team and not invest in the team? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right? I think that's the biggest concern. I saw a couple things online yesterday wondering if the Wilfs have any interest in baseball. <laughs> only, only because they have, they have proven to be great owners yep. of the Vikings. They have proven to want to win, to spend the money, to do what it takes. And that's really what you want, right? You want someone that's going to be willing to, to do the best they can. In a, in a, in, it's not a major market. Te you know, television-wise and revenue-wise. So you've got to figure out how to make it all work, but you don't want someone who's going to cut payroll right yeah. after you make it to the playoffs oh. and win. You don't want that. You know, I'm you, not... You don't want that. It's never been a surprise to me that Ziggy Wilf would make a great NFL owner because look what he did with the uh, second high, uh, second-hand exercise equipment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that is a different guy. Not the same What's guy. What's the name of that company again? Was it well, second not, Wind? Second actually, it used wind. to be Second yeah. Wind. No, I think yeah, it's Johnson Ziggy Wilf. <laughs> One uh, group or name to keep a little bit of an eye on, I saw a little bit of a whisper about this yesterday, was the, is the Davis family, Marty Davis family. They go into Cambria. Yep. I'm yep. sorry, who? The Marty da Davis family, who owns Cambria. Cambria. Oh, yeah, they got a couple of bucks. I, don't, I never heard of this. What is this? Um, they, they inquired privately years ago about this and were told that the team wasn't for sale, and they're, they're okay. local people. Marty Davis is the name I should keep yeah. an eye on. See, I heard Vince McMahon. Oh, I no, don't he's think a popular so. figure oh. right now. I think he's underwater. A Rod, yeah. and I heard uh, bring an A Rod. A Rod, I heard rumors that and Snoop, oh. Snoop Dogg might buy the Twins. Yeah, because A Rod had no problem coming up with the cash for the Wolves. <laughs> <laughs> well, now Brad Ryder, here's something. Now, uh, yeah, I only ever hear negative things about the Polad family. You worked for him for five, six years. Yeah. What do you got to say? Uh, they they treated. Me just fine. They were they were great. I mean, I think they're great people to work for if you're an employee of them. Um, you know, they they were fair. They were good. Um, I you know, obviously, I think the the 
criticism of them is the payroll and you know how much how much they spend on payroll. But if you're an employee of theirs, they took they took very care good care of me. Did anyone else? Dana, your thoughts on working? For and I feel oh the same way. I, I, I feel the same way about Glenn Taylor too. I forgot. Yeah. Dana you know, a few used people to... text in and, and said, "What about Glenn Taylor?" Oh, Glenn Taylor. What are your thoughts as on far as buying the twins? No, I mean, and it's not because I have any bad feelings with him. It's just that he's. He's literally, he's what, 84 years old? No, right. he's not going to yeah. buy the Twins. So yeah. no one else heard the rumor that Snoop Dogg might be interested in buying the Twins? No. What about Matt Damon? I heard that <laughs> name as well. No. What about Tom Brady? <laughs> yeah, I, I saw some people talking about that. Ta- about Did Matt they, Damon? No, about Tom Brady. They were like, hey, dude, drop the Raiders and buy the Twins. <laughs> All right, the effing Yankees beat the Royals. So New York wins that series, and they're off to the league championship series. That blows. Yeah, Garrett Cole was too much. We're going to see the Yankees and Mets, aren't we? You're probably right. Oh, and, and, and that's just going to make me not watch any of it. You're Absolutely, right. Absolutely. Yeah. No, you're right. And the Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl. And uh, and the uh, uh, another pinch hit dong came into play in the Cleveland-Detroit series. This time it was the Guardians' David Fry who hit right. the dong. Seventh inning. Guardians win last night, so they force a game five tomorrow night. Tonight, Game 5, Dodgers, Padres. Fun. Fun. And the Lynx won Game 1 of the WNBA oh. Final Finals, and people say it was the uh, largest Incredible. comeback in uh, WNBA Final Final history. Incredible. Has to get it in. Find Stewart. Stewart for the tie. Misses the layup. And Minnesota with a miracle Game 1 win. 95-93. It was Amazing. a hell of a deal. They were down 18, down 15 with five, just over five minutes to go. And somehow found a way to come back and win that game on the side. Courtney Williams was amazing. Yes, and game two will be Sunday. The Pigs won the opener. Golden Go for football plays at the University of California at Los Angeles tomorrow yeah. night. Eight o'clock game. That's fun. Both Golden Go for men's and women's hockey are playing this week. Okay. Hang on one second now. I need to get myself organized. We're ready to make a new famous friend here on the program. We are. And we're going to do that with a fresh edition of a gimmick we call Who Dis? Hello. 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 Wait, hang on. I got another call. Who Dis? Who dis? Randy Shaver, Brad Ryder. You guys better be ready. We're tasking you with asking our guest, who's on the telephone line, asking our guest yes or no questions to try and figure out who dis is. Um, and, of course, we, we ask our guest to only answer yes or no to the questions. If we can, uh, our special guest, we're very thankful they're able to join us, uh, can you just say hello? Hello. All right. Randy Shaver, Perfect. Brad Ryder. We always start with Randy. Brad, would you like to start uh, this edition of... No, I'd like Randy to start that. Oh, <laughs> oh, you're a plan. Yeah, you want to I am. Off. Here's the thing. Age uh, before beauty. <laughs> here, here, I mean, I, th- I think we meant originally for this to be a competition, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a competition. No, right, it's, Josh? it's fun either way. I don't, just, I don't view it as a competition. Yes, you I do, do. Brad I, I view dad fights as a competition. You guys not. are the two most competitive people I you know. You lose every week, Brad. That's, <laughs> That's why I view dad fights as a competition and not this. <laughs> Randy, right. do you think it's a competition? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes, he does. I'm really excited for this. I am. Uh, so, Randy Shaver, uh, take it away, son, okay. uh, with your first yes or no question for our guest. Are you a current Timberwolves player? No. All right, no to Timbawo, Brad Ryder. <laughs> you guys are going to laugh at this question. Uh, are you a current member of the Vikings coaching staff? No. Okay. thought maybe you snagged Kevin O'Connell on an off week. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh, Ashley, no, that, that, Ashley would melt. I'd be in yeah. tears. Yeah, I would have yeah. gave it away. That's pr- <laughs> that's pretty good strategy on your part, right? The Vikings have time off. No, he's not Kevin O'Conrad. Randy Shaver. Are you a current Vikings player? No. Hmm. Yeah. 
guys are falling into bad habits now because we have had a pretty good uh, yes. uh, Vikings presence yeah. uh, so far. In this. I'm going to go back to a question I asked last week. Are you a member of the Timberwolves broadcast crew? <laughs> no. Ooh. All right. I like this. Yeah, so we far. were. Yeah. Sometimes you guys get it too quick. I love this. Randy Shaver. Are you a current Minnesota Wild player? No. I dig it even more. I love hearing the gears grind on you guys. Brad Ryder. Are you a former Minnesota Vikings player? <laughs> no. <laughs> Is anyone counting? Because I think yeah. once we get to 20. <laughs> are, are you a professional athlete that plays in Minnesota? No. <laughs> Back to Brad. <laughs> are you a current professional athlete in any sport? No. No. Here's the thing. I know it. I do, too. I figured it out, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's even on our calendar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Randy Shaver. Randy Shaver. Do you want, you? Do you want, a, uh, you want a hint? Yeah, maybe give Randy one more. And we should. Okay, give stop focusing on professional sports, maybe. Yeah. I know. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Um, do you play football for the Gophers? No. Maybe not. Are you a are you a former college athlete in the state of Minnesota? Yes. Mm-hmm. Former okay. college athlete. Did you say from the state of Minnesota? Yeah, I said right? in the state of Minnesota. And the but answer was yes. Our our very bored guest said yes. <laughs> <laughs> our, Come on, oh, Randy. Um, did you play basketball for the Gophers? Yes. All right, Brad. Is this Quincy Lewis? No. Okay. <laughs> did is it my turn? Yes. Yes, yes it is. Yep. Um, did you play basketball for Clem Haskins? No. Oh man. <laughs> Brad, writer, I, I know you guys got it now. You yeah. Bring it home, boys. <laughs> There's just a lot of different yeah. directions it could be. Um, did you play high school basketball in Minnesota? Yes. I, I, I apologize if this offends you, but i got to take another guess. What? Is, what is this Joel Prisbilla? No. Okay. Out of turn. <laughs> yeah. They're getting desperate now. They're going well, out of turn. The, the sad part about that, Waffle, is that that's the exact name I wrote down on my paper. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm we've been to, on this show too long together, I think. I'm trying to think how I can give another hint without giving it away. I mean, you got you got the man surrounded mm -hmm. for the most part. It's like battleship right are you, now. Are you, okay, are you currently involved with the Gopher basketball program? Yes. Okay, is this Ben Johnson? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> See, now my next question was, my next question was, were you an all-state football player from De La Salle? There you go. <laughs> you know, Brad did go out of turn. So. <laughs> yes, thank you. I know that Randy Shaver and Brad Ryder are embarrassed, I think, that it took... Oh, well, that, when I started guessing names, I'm like, I don't want to offend the person on the phone, but I, these are the first people that are coming to mind. Golden Gopher men's head basketball coach Ben Johnson yeah. joins the half ass Morning Show, and, and this is really, really cool. Thank you for your time, Coach. No, no problem. Appreciate you having me on. And sorry about my friends. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry. We enjoy playing the game Who Dis. I love that the boys were tested a little bit today. Yes, the brother and sisterhood. So. We got a lot of techs who knew who it was very early. A on. lot of our listeners knew who you were right away, uh, Coach. So that is your first time on our show. Um, uh, we're, we're we're really excited about it. You got some big Golden Gopher basketball fans on this program. Um, but since we don't know you uh, terribly well, uh, uh, what what uh, what does today look like uh, for uh, Ben Johnson as you're getting ready? 
oh, in a couple of weeks, uh, getting uh, the season started. Yeah, we're about uh, almost a week away from our first exhibition game, and so it's just getting, you know, kind of fine-tuned a little bit and, and getting guys as comfortable as we can be uh, in this early part of the season to start competing and playing against, uh, you know, other bodies and, and other teams. And so just, you know, more practice time and, and more reps and, and getting these guys ready. It, it cannot be an easy job in any sense of the word these days. No. To be to be coaching Division One college basketball with all the changes and the NIL and the players' ability to go this way and that way and this way and that, uh, I don't know how much you want to say about the, the good and the bad, but I mean, are there days when you say, "My damn, how come I couldn't have been a coach in the '80s?" You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm more thinking, man, why couldn't I have been a player right now? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's probably that's probably more like it, but um, you know it. it, it it is what it is. Um, you know, I think there is some, some benefits from it. I think, um, you know, if we're able to, as a, as a Gopher community um, and program, you know, be able to fundraise money uh, to the level that, that is needed, you know, you have every opportunity to be as competitive as any program across the country. I think, um, you know, the answers to the test as far as recruiting are more clear now than they've ever been. And, Again, it, it comes down to, you know, making sure you do a good job evaluating and getting to know families and kids still um, and then continue to fundraise and, and put your program in a position where, um, you know, you can generate uh, talent, whether that's through the high school ranks or, or through the portal, that can, that can help you win games and, and also represent your program in the, in the community the right way. So, Ben, how do you do this, though, when – I mean, how do you establish loyalty for your program with players – Take away the money part of it. How do you establish the loyalty, though? Because it just feels like teams are pulled apart every year mm -hmm. because of the NIL. How do, you, how do you establish loyalty so that you can get guys to stay? Right. I think a big piece of that is, is obviously, um, you know, being competitive. And yeah. I think people in, inherently want to be part of, of a winner or a winning program. And so that, that's – you know, step one is, is you want to be competitive and remain competitive. Um, and then also you just want to be able to do right by your guys. You know, you want your guys to be able to feel like they're growing and getting better as a player because that's why they came here. They want to develop and as, you know, on the court as much as possible. They want to make sure they're developing off the floor as a, as a young man, young adult. And then, you know, obviously there's the financial piece now, which is a little bit different. Um, and so just making sure that, you know, you're competitive um, and as competitive as it is, um, you know, outside schools and outside programs um, are doing the same thing. And so you're competing um, not only within your program, but also on the outside because obviously good players will attract attention. And so, um, you know, it's just, it's a different landscape, but I think at the end of the day, you still got to do right by players. Um, you still want, and I still want guys that are here uh, for the big picture and the long-term plan and the right reasons. You know, there's a, there's a definitely a financial piece to it now, but um, that I don't want that to be the end all be all. And we really try to express that to our guys that if it's just a money chase, this probably isn't a place for you for a number of reasons. Yep. Um, and if it's not, you know, you can still financially gain and be in a good position and also have everything else, whether that's academically, socially, or athletically. Tough gig, man. Yeah. Tough yep. gig. And how do you handle those refs sometimes? Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I saw you a couple times last year. I really thought you were going to go out on the floor and just pull the ref's eyebrows off of his face. How do you handle the ref? How do you keep your composure? I go nuts watching the games with the referees, Ben Johnson. Well, you, you, you're, you're kind of forced to, especially in, you know, in my position in this league. you got a lot of storied head coaches that have got a little more clout than me. And so uh, I think for me, it's, it's having that relationship and, and knowing that, um, you know, obviously those guys aren't perfect. Um, I think for me, um, you know, worrying about just coaching our team and coaching our guys, there's going to be good calls, bad calls. I just hope that it evens out 
at the end of the day. Um, but I've learned for myself, you know, the best thing is to, to focus my energy as much as I can on, on what we're doing and, and what we need to do as a team. And, and just hopefully they give you a fair whistle throughout. You show a lot of patience out there. Hey, Randy <laughs> Shaver, was Ben Johnson? Uh, ben Johnson had to have been one of your athletes of the week. Oh, yeah. He was a former, uh, when I said that about football, he yeah. was on my all-metro football team. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great athlete at De La Salle, for sure. Is that true? Well, ben? Would you say that? Would you agree? <laughs> would you agree with Randy? <laughs> no, I remember. Um, you know, those were those were different times, even in how things were covered in the media. And I thought, um, you know, Randy did a great job throughout the state of just putting a spotlight on on prep sports, but especially especially football. And um, and it was always kind of cool. I mean, whenever. You would have a big time play or, or a big win. Um, I remember, you know, guys would always think if it was on. I think it was what Press Sports Extra. That's correct. Uh, um, Thank you. And then guys would always try to figure out if, if the highlight made it. You know, if there were cameras <laughs> there, then you tried to you try to do something a little special to get on there. And uh, they, they, you know, athletes of the week and all that. We all yeah. we all kept tabs and and dialed in and were and were turned up for it. Yeah, nowadays, nowadays, every team in the state, basketball, football, whatever, they probably can just jump straight to YouTube and watch the game they played the night they, before. Yep, sure. Back in Ben Johnson's yeah. day. I mean, you, you only made television if, uh, if if something happened, you know, something legit. Um, and it's great to have a local guy coaching the Golden Gophers, you know, just on a side note, everyone knows Ben's a local guy. Speaking of local, uh, someone told me, Ben Johnson, that you took the whole team, I don't know if this was this year or last year, you took the whole team out to the state fair uh, together. Uh, that must have been a, uh, an adventure. <laughs> yeah, we've done that the last uh, the last couple of years, and our guys have, have actually took a, a pretty big liking to it. Um, and we toured different different parts of the fair, and um, it's kind of become an a annual thing. I think it's good to, to be able to get out and, and reach our fan base and, and to be able to connect with, with the people that are out the fair. And I think our guys... Uh, end up really enjoying the food, obviously, and uh, <laughs> they they took part in some of the rides, and especially the the young guys that got out of state to be able to see just the uh, the magnitude of our fair and, and how well it's put on. Uh, it's pretty pretty cool experience, and and our guys actually look forward to it every year. That's cool. I bet the I bet the dude behind the booth at the foot long hot dog joint backpedals when he sees you guys coming. You know what I mean? <laughs> Bunch of seven foot dudes, you know, nineteen twenty years old. You. You probably could do some real damage. Do you think the Papa Shot guy just yeah. shuts down? <laughs> I'm going on break. Yeah. Did you stop no, at the no. Papa Shot booth? <laughs> no question. There's a there's definitely a couple booths that we try to steer guys away from, especially guys that need to make sure that they're staying in the right type of shape. So yeah. uh, we're pretty we're pretty we're pretty heads up on that. But uh, no, I think they really dove into the. I know the cookies are a big hit. Um, and, and getting the hot chocolate chip cookies. And then we got some local guys that liked some of more exotic stuff. I want to say some of our guys this year had, like, there was, like, an alligator on a stick or something like that. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> some, some of the guys venture out and get a little bit more risky. I just have one more, a couple more questions for you, Ben Johnson, before we let you go. Because, you know, you played here for the Golden Gophers. You played at Northwestern. Who was the best player you ever played with and who was the best player you ever played against? Ooh, that's a really good question. Oh man. Um well I know the one the one that I've probably played against is a little bit easier. Um Jamal Crawford when he was at Michigan oh, was wow. um was really, really tough to guard. I mean that was you know, you look at his body and his frame and you know, you you know, a long six six and maybe a buck seventy five, but I mean he was he was he was a beast. He was a monster. And that was kind of an eye opener. That was like a welcome to the, you want to talk about talent right up there. And, you know, that was my freshman year. It was the same time Michigan State won the, the NCAA tournament. So they were loaded with, you know, Mateen Cleaves and Charlie Bell and Bo Pete, oh, yeah. A.J. Granger and Andre Hudson. Um, you know, that was, back then it was a little bit different. You know, Dean Keddy was still at Purdue and oh. Bobby Knight was still at <laughs> Indiana. And so um, it was like the whole school Big Ten where, you know, you went into the paint, you were getting a forearm, you played against true, you know, grown men like Brian Cardinal. Um, and it was just, it was a battle. But that's, that's what, you know, where I, I grew to, to love the league and, um, you know, very thankful to continue to be a part of it. So um, the best player you ever played with? 
Played with man. Um, you, played with, uh, you played with Chris Humphreys, right? He was a damn uh, uh, a terrific college ball player. I did, I did. You know, and this is no offense to to anybody I played with at the U, but probably the best player I played with and one of my closest friends is Troy Bell, oh, who was God. a first round draft sure. pick. Uh, you know, we grew up together, um, but he was a guy that, you know, whether it was one-on-one or we would, you know, go fives, um, he was a guy that just, you know, because we're in the same position to match up against him, um, incredible athlete, uh, he was probably the guy that was the most explosive guy and um, probably the most talented guy I played with. Well, we thank you for your time. Ben Johnson, head coach of the Golden Gopher men's basketball team. Uh, we we hype luck. you up every year on this program. I live and die with that friggin' club. And, uh, you know, you mentioned earlier you're looking to compete. You guys competed last year. You do, and you have. And and it's been fun to watch. So we we, we wish you even a higher level of this upcoming season, Ben. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. You bet. Ben Thanks, Johnson, ben. part of the Who Dis. Uh, today's edition of Who Dis. Uh, you guys battled for that one. Yeah, that yeah. was tough. Not easy. I, I try to think <clears throat> of uh, in order to uh, figure out the player. But I, I feel bad was. guessing names when I'm wrong. <clears throat> because yeah. then I feel like the, the guest is slighted in some way. Well, they're all grown folks. They can take it, Brad. How, how funny is that, though? Brad wanted to guess Prisbilla, and I wrote Prisbilla down. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. We have the same brains. Golden <laughs> Gophers start their exhibition season October 19th. What did we miss before we get the hell out of here? Oh, man. Well, I don't think you missed anything. It, it was just a busy, busy night. Last yeah. Night. Yeah, it was. A lot of stuff going on. It was, it was going back and forth between the two baseball games, the wild game, the football game, and the Lynx game. Yeah. You're working that remote yeah. Like some kind of sick pervert or something, Brad Ryder. Well, you guys go ahead. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, Monday morning, we'll be back in business. Randy Shaver, Brad Ryder, thanks again. All right. Yeah, thanks. We'll be back in a few minutes on the Half Ass Morning Show. Half Ass Morning Show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Our technicians are geared up and ready to make sure your system is running reliably this winter. Regular maintenance from standard heating and air conditioning helps prevent costlier breakdowns in the future, and we know they always happen at the worst time. Hey, Ashley here. Get your home ready for winter. Schedule your furnace tune-up with standard heating and air conditioning and save $30. Have a boiler? Save $40 on your boiler tune-up. Visit standardheating.com to book and lock in your savings. Stay cozy, stay ready. The Jim Jackson Show isn't just another NBA podcast. Of course, I'll break down everything about the league that I played in for 14 years and now cover as a broadcaster. There will be plenty of interviews with the biggest players, personalities, and insiders in the NBA. I say there's more to life than ball. That's why on this podcast, I'm going to delve into other passions, maybe business, and maybe travel. I love lifestyle. The Jim Jackson Show, wherever you listen. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. If something should happen to one or both of us, I'd regret not having said this, so I'm just going to say it. You have a nice penis. I see it a lot. I don't say anything, but it's nice. Now, you say something nice about my penis. All right, we're going to try and keep this effing thing going for a little while longer. I think we're uh, we're paid till 9. Welcome back to the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Uh, drinkers and drug addicts. Right now on the Luther Bloomington Kia text line, text ANIMAL to 651-989-9393 for a chance to win tickets to 93X percents Disturbed. It's the sickness anniversary tour. Ew. The sickness. I remember being down with the sickness 25 years ago. 25 years ago, everybody and their mother was down with the sickness. Get up, <laughs> get up, get down with the sickness. That's right. Instead this of saying the... hello, we just walk up to someone and go, oh, waka, ah, ah. <laughs> that was our greeting. I love that. Oh, oh. And then we do that. Oh. That's the response. He's not That's lying, man. That's the call man. and response. <laughs> He's not friggin' lying. The uh, Disturbed Sickness Anniversary Tour with special guest Three Days Grace, Seven Dust. It's coming up Thursday, March 6th at Target Center. Again, your text word is animal, and the number is 651-989-9393. Tickets go on sale October 18th, you know, to mere mortals. We got your opportunity to be 
a cut above that. Seen Disturbed in concert. They put on a good show. Seven Dust. Wow. That yep. is a great live band. Three Days Grace is awesome, too. One of my favorite bands I've seen live. Is uh, Adam Gantier? Gantier. Gant yeah. Is he singing for them again? Uh, there's He's, been back and forth. Has with there? It. Yeah. He's, that guy is really good. Yep. If you want details on the pre sale or to pre register, uh, go to 93x.com and click the show link, is how they put it here. The show link. And uh, thank you to the folks at Live Nation who provided the prize. So there, that's a big show coming to town. Disturb Three Days Grace, Seven Dust. Of course, whenever I hear Seven Dust, all I want to say out loud is, Oh, man. That's the boogie woogie. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you know what I'm talking about. Others do not. Um, all right. How many of us are currently in a relationship? I have a wife. Um, all right. I'm, I'd like to remind you, you also have a wife. <laughs> all right. That's two of us. I have a boyfriend. And I have a fiance. And I have no one. It's okay, Waffle. You've got a couple of hands. I do. Can I borrow yours, too? Yes, you can. How many of us are currently in a relationship? So I think the answer is uh, four out of five. Do you want a relationship tip, or would you rather I mind my damn business? Sure. I feel like I could always use the help. Yeah, a not? relationship tip? You, you don't know, need one of those, Cubby. It's, uh, it, here's the thing about relationships, and I learned this from your wife who uh, texted me. When, my wife. When I wished her a happy anniversary, um, she mentioned that it has been quite... The journey of love and growth. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've established that. Yes. The two of us have established that uh, through our last year of marriage, it's been a journey of love and growth. Yes. she. Yeah. Uh, you had told that story, and then when I texted her to say happy anniversary, she responded, thank you very much. It has been a journey of love and growth. I'm sure you can all picture how I reacted when she told me that our marriage was a journey of love and growth. Did you, <laughs> did you throw up? It wasn't a great reaction. It wasn't a positive reaction. When I heard that said out loud. All right, a relationship tip. So the reason I bring that up is because, yes, any time, any tip, you know, it's a journey, right? So mm -hmm. we can improve at any time. Okay, right. right. We should always be learning uh, as we go on this journey. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I, I echo everything that's being said. Yeah. <laughs> um, Love, bro. You know, I don't know. I get a little burned out on the, here's some relationship advice, people. I'm even more burned out on the, the sex advice. Here's a little advice for your love life. Look, you know, everybody's screwed at this point. <laughs> you know, stop it with it. But this is a little different. This is meant to be a little more fun, I think. So I think this is actually pretty genius. You, you, you like this one? Yeah. Uh, this has been passed around the godless, soulless, evil internet. And it's uh, a tip on how to get out of certain situations that you just don't want to be in. And according to this tip, you relate everything to your ex. <laughs> that is so good. It's brilliant, actually. <laughs> I mean... That's a mistake. No, it's not. Yeah, you got to listen to the tip. Well, we'll get there, Ashley. You're always... What does she do, Josh? She, she jumps, jumps... To conclusions. To conclusions yeah. is what she does. <laughs> so I'll, I'll get to the full gist here. Say your partner wants to go to a restaurant that you don't like. The tip is that you say, oh, yeah, I remember that joint. That was a place that uh, me and my ex used to go. Oh, that's yeah. smart. That yeah. wouldn't work. I'd be like, okay, cool. Let's go there so we can make better memories. Oh, I'm like, no. Let's do dang it. it you just turned it around on me. <laughs> you seem very aggressive and angry about this so far. Dang it. We're going to have to get to the bottom of where this aggressiveness and this anger is coming from. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> yeah, you can always flip it. Okay, another right. another example. You have won. <laughs> so all she has to do is flip it, and she wins. Yeah, and then, she won. So she, she's already squashed this theory? Yeah, I thought you can't come back from this one, but you came back instantaneously. <laughs> okay, let's see if she can twist this one around. Another tip would be, oh, for example, your uh, current uh, partner wants to buy some expensive couch. You don't want it. So you say, ah, yeah, I, I like it. It looks like the one me and my ex used to sit on. Can you flip that? That just wouldn't bother me. I'd be like, who, who cares? You're above yeah, all well, of this. Well, all couches like, could kind of look the same. I don't know. <laughs> I'd be like, why? Because it's like 
gray? Is that too close for you? <laughs> your partner wants to go on vacation. Uh, you don't want to go to that spot. So you oh. say, sure, I love that spot. My ex and I. Okay, so you follow the theme. That, that one would win. That one would win. We still wouldn't throw make out memories? your make memory. Yeah, one. that one's a little bit more like, ah. Uh, because uh, yeah. All you got to do is play chicken, and you won. Yeah, that, that's true. Just Dang play it. chicken. Oh, yeah, that's where me and my ex went for our honeymoon. Oh, yeah, you oh. dropped the honeymoon car. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right, so here's the thing. Obviously, you can't use this over and over again. You're probably going to, you probably only have one shot at this, one realistic yeah. shot at this. Or else it gets a little sketchy where you're like, Jesus, does everything remind you of your ex? It gets immediately <laughs> You sketchy. and your ex used to take the dog for walks too? <laughs> <laughs> and also, you need a partner who's insecure about your exes. Mm-hmm. That's the only way that's going to work. And also, apparently, someone who knows nothing about your past. See, that, <laughs> yeah. that, that's where the whole in this theory is for me. Um, if you've been with someone long enough to go on vacation with them, to buy a couch with them, things like that, they know you you haven't been to Maui. They know you don't like chilies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So you're going to have... I mean, it's only going to work if you have someone who's jealous and someone who forgets everything that you say about your past or everything about your past. But Josh, you you did Ashley ruin it for you? You really like the sound of this. Oh at yeah, first. <laughs> yeah. You, I mean, Ashley, you destroyed that instantaneously. I thought, well, what a great bit. I mean, you you can't lose on that one yeah. unless you use it all the time, obviously. Yeah, you just gotta always just flip it on him. Yeah, the um, I I had a situation where uh, um, I don't know, a certain relationship I was in. My wife. Um, I, I had left the toilet seat down. And she questioned me on it. And I was like, why is this a thing? Why, why are you frustrated? And then she asked if I had a thing for a, a girl who had mentioned you should always keep the toilet seat down. So she <laughs> thought in her mind that that was me somehow trying to connect with this person who made an offhand comment. About, I, I'm like, I have no idea. I don't even know if it was me. No, I'm sorry, I'm just polite and yeah, raised that way. I, I don't understand. I don't know what the problem is here. I'm very fond of your wife, but at times uh, you tell stories that leads me to believe that she might be insane. <laughs> she has her moments. Right? Hang on. I mean, put, I'm going to piece this together again. And you, this, you left the toilet seat down. down. Yes. Um, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, the lid. The lid down. The lid. So it's closed. Down. Yeah, the, to- the toilet yep. is completely closed. Yes. Okay. Your wife notices this. And, and it wasn't something that I guess I did every time. I, I never really paid attention. Okay. And her assumption was that, you got to say it again. I can't piece it together. A, uh, a woman we knew in passing, one of the most despicable people I've ever met, by really? the way. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I don't really dislike many people, but I do this one. Okay had said in passing you should always close the seat always or excuse me the lid i keep saying and seat. so since you did that i did it once I, and i didn't even think about it and she's like hey what you know what's going on there I'm like what do you mean <laughs> that might reflect a fondness that you have for this woman yeah yeah she I, made that connection i mean I, she she really is a jealous person isn't she i think she tries to hide sometimes she gets that way Woo we uh, when you were telling the story i thought you told it wrong first because you were going to say you left it up you know like sometimes women don't like when the toilet seats all the way up yeah no it was uh, i closed the lid wow I mean, you did and it almost correct. ruined my yeah. relationship oh, that is a great. really interesting story <laughs> yeah you did something that like every woman wants every like, woman well yeah. <laughs> most putting the toilet seat down you thought i was picking on you for saying every yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Roastmaster totally. Jesus said, I think everybody totally. should close the lid. Why would you want to leave it open? Yeah, I usually I do yeah. now I because I'm never... just obsessed with that girl. Yeah, yeah you are. I, I'm now realizing that, like, I don't do that, and neither does my boyfriend. Well, I, I so, didn't know that was a thing. I, obviously, we know I'm kind of nuts, but I always put the toilet seat down because I think, like, the animals are going to get in the toilet seat, like, drink from the water bowl or, like, toilet bowl. Well, that's why like we that. keep ours down now, yeah, because yeah. our, our dogs will drink. They love drinking. You know, you could have like three the, bowls of water out, but they're like, no, after yeah. that, I want the toilet water. I so couldn't that's tell what you I what I instantly think about. So that's why I put it down. 
Uh, when I was younger, I couldn't tell you how I left the toilet seat after I used it. But since I caught OCD, oh, mm. I'll close all of them tight. I have to have everything down in place, in line. Everything has to be where it should be. So uh, with, with, with your OCD, like yes. if you have a box of Kleenex. Hang on a second. Before you go, I need to organize some things over here, Wapple, before you uh, continue <laughs> well, on. That's a little crooked. A couple yeah. of staplers turn, turn need to be lined up. Side. Okay, go ahead. So if, if like the <laughs> Kleenex is not out of the box, do you have to pull it out of the box so it's like showing? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. <sighs> That's a good question. Yeah, I suppose yes. When I open up a brand new box of Kleenex, yes, I will. I will use a sheet yep. so it's presentable and usable. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yep. that's, I mean, it looks pretty that way, too. I Ashley, will. let me see if you can instantaneously shoot down another thing I've been told, which I thought was kind of a genius piece of advice. Uh, I had a boss once tell me, don't get good at anything you don't want to do. Have you heard that before? Yeah, I have heard that before, and... Yeah, I'd say that's that's probably true. That's unbreakable, right? Yeah, there. All right, good. You have nothing to ruin it. Nope, nothing to ruin that. Okay. That one's unbreakable. Because I've I've seen it happen before. Oh, I've seen it many times. <laughs> Where somebody learns how to do something, and now they're they're the one that has to do that. They're every the go-to person. Day. Yep. yep. Mm. So again, this new fragile relationship tip. We learned it's very fragile. This relationship tip is if you want to get out of trips or restaurant uh, dates or you want to get out of anything with your current partner you relate everything to your ex oh yeah my ex like that place oh yeah i've been there before with my ex again it's only going to maybe work once yeah. you have to have a jealous partner you have to hope she doesn't remember anything about your personal taste but it, it's out there in case <laughs> someone wants to use it yeah, it's worth it if you're in a pinch, you know, even if it is a Hail Mary, might hit. Yeah, I wouldn't use it on a restaurant, but right, if there's like a trip or something, mm -hmm. that's not bad. Uh, uh, my ex, we used to cut the grass together. <laughs> Can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I remember going back to my yeah. in-law's place with my ex back yeah. in the day. <laughs> wow, did you see this yet, Josh? Did you see this yet? There's a big, fancy, and cool-sounding word or a couple of words for what you were describing a minute ago. Don't get good at anything you don't want to do. Uh, otherwise known as weaponized incompetence. Yeah, that's, oh, that's no. genius. That, that is a cool couple of words back to back. Men get accused of using weaponized incompetence quite a bit, and they definitely do. Like, they will fold the laundry incorrectly on purpose so they no longer have to help or load the dishwasher wrong, that oh. kind of stuff. Well, I wonder if my... I've heard people say that, right? Do it, do it wrong on purpose. I wonder if my friggin' wife is listening right now. I mean, I probably with, with a lot of time, a lot of time, I probably could figure out how to do some computer stuff. But she's so good at it, you know what I mean? I. Yeah. Roastmaster Jesus said my wife won't even use Siri on her phone because I dated a girl 40 years ago named Siri. Please, I don't oh, want to open up that can of worms. <laughs> you know that my blood pressure just absolutely skyrockets when we get into conversations about jealous people. I just get pissed. That I poor do. girl now, though, I bet she just hates her name. <laughs> I mean, the story about your wife in the toilet seat, Josh, I'm sorry, but I got pissed. <laughs> <laughs> and, Josh, you told us a story once, too. Your wife got mad at you because she had a dream that you cheated on her. Yeah, well, she realized it. To her credit, she realized it was ridiculous, but you're right. She was mad at me the entire day. Yeah. But, it, like, in a relationship, isn't that kind of the cool part about it is you can't do something, but your partner can, so that kind of makes you guys whole. Wapple, oh. Wapple, uh, it makes put them... that on a card. Yeah. <laughs> that was beautiful. I'm going to go to Hallmark. Hallmark. Yeah. We you're... have become one. We, we are one. You I'm make terrible at this. You're terrible at that. You've We're got a whole. few of my favorite holes. You can do that one, too. <laughs> Hot Cocoa Sheezus has texted in to say if you uh, think weaponized incompetence is something, you should see weaponized incontinence. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, God. Oh, no. All right. Relationships. What a nightmare. Why do we sign up for this stuff? Because yeah. the sex. <laughs> <laughs> the sex. Well, you don't have to be in a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> you know? The constant sex, I guess. Again. You don't have to yeah, be I mean, in a relationship. There's, 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 you know, you could spend some I money wonder... on that. You could, maybe you're just uh, somebody can pick up 
somebody easily? Sometimes you come off like you just woke up, <laughs> Ashley. You do. I don't know. It's something, something a lot different than being with the same person and doing that than like a bunch of randos. Next thing you know, you're. Yeah, you're I know. That's why I asked the question <laughs> why do we put ourselves in this position? <laughs> there is something very different about doing it with one person over and over again <laughs> as opposed to randos. <laughs> I think you know which one, which which uh, angle I prefer. <laughs> true. That's true. I could see you using this new uh, this new trick. Be like, oh yeah, uh, you're interested in monogamy. You know, my ex was into that. Oh, <laughs> God. see if that works. Oh. You're a terrific crowd. We got to take a break. We'll be back here in a minute. Oh, be damned! You bet. You are listening to the 93X Half Fast Morning Show. It's our Friday, so we're all about about done here. About uh, 12. Coming up on it. 12 minutes. Maybe we can maybe we can get it done in nine. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to put that on our time card. Maybe we get going a little early. It's Friday. Um, boy, I got another text message uh, that makes me just feel so good inside. Uh, I remember last week, maybe it was two weeks ago, I was going on and on like I do about, you got to listen to this song, you got to listen to this band. A couple weeks ago, it was the, the Queen song, It's Late. You got to listen to it. It's one of the greatest rock songs of all time. Uh, and I got some feedback from people saying never heard the song before listen to it love it thank you for the uh, the hint um giggles jesus texted into the program josh heard you and i talking yesterday about the iron maiden song alexander the great which apparently they're playing on their current tour i'm very excited to see that song live because i've never seen them perform that song live it's one of my favorites they've ever done so giggles jesus texted in uh, Listen to Alexander the Great by Iron Maiden for the very first time. It was the first Maiden song they've ever heard. Really? And they said, holy dogs, they are talented musicians. Thanks for sharing. Oh, that's great. That's cool. Yeah, listen to more Maiden. I mean, that's good advice just for everybody. Mm-hmm. And I think you, if you like that song, you'll love a lot of their stuff. If you come out to Onion Head's Revenge yes. tomorrow between 7 and 9 and come see me, you can sign up to win tickets to Iron Maiden. Hey. What? Hey. Yeah. How come you get tickets to give away to Iron Maiden? I don't have because any tickets cool. to give away to Iron Maiden. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so 7 to 9, Mall of America. We're going to try and make it out and see you, Ashley. Yes, I, uh, I'm excited. That was fun. That was fun hanging out. And we get to watch you. Uh, I'm glad you're still a part of it. You filmed a little. You're a fake news lady. Oh, yeah. Yep. That they uh, that they play during the thing. So, oh, yeah, it was cool. That took a lot of takes. I get nervous in front of the camera. <laughs> what do you think about this? So the, the hack was you're in a relationship. You don't want to do something. Say, oh, yeah, my ex and I used to do that a lot right. in, in hopes that your significant other says, well, then F that. We're not doing it. Mm-hmm. And then you get what you want. Uh, Ashley turned it around on us quite quickly saying, well, you, you just say, okay, we're going to do that, but make better memories. Oil Spill Jesus said the way you fight back to that is you say, yeah, my ex gave me a handy at that place and see if she'll top it. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. There's some real thinkers out there. Yeah. I'll try anything four times, Jesus said. His best relationship advice is when you're in an argument, just get naked. No one wants to argue with a naked man. <laughs> Works every time, wins every time. All right, next time I have a meeting with the boss, I don't know what I'm going to do. No more strategy. <laughs> He'll turn it around on you. He'll get naked. <laughs> then we'll wrestle. <laughs> I bet he's got a couple of, what, what's his soccer team? Arsenal. Arsenal. He's got a couple of Arsenal tattoos somewhere. Yeah, he does. <laughs> why, uh, why in God's name, uh, I can't remember. Um, why were we talking about Stevie Wonder earlier this morning? Uh, because it's... I was listening to him yesterday. He came on in the car. And what song I was he him, singing yesterday? Uh, I hope I just was... call. I just call. Oh. I was hoping that wouldn't be the answer. That's the one. Because that's one of the worst songs ever. Oh, I like that song. Uh, no, you do not I like I Just Stevie Called Wonder. to Say I Love You. See, this is why you and Stevie could never get along. Go ahead. I, I, I do this bit with my wife where there's a celebrity that I think I'd like. I ask her, do you think that me and so-and-so would be friends? If you met? <laughs> and there's never been a yes from her. She's never said yes. But that's why he came up. You asked your wife. Do you think Stevie and yeah. I would ever be friends? Like, if Stevie and I were ever in the same place, do you think we could develop a friendship? It's a regular love gimmick. And growth? Yeah, I do it, I do it all the Between time. Between you and the uh, wife. Uh, that, that's hilarious. Uh, okay, thank you for reminding me. Did this really happen? This is so terrible. Um, uh, because Josh brought up Stevie Wonder earlier, I was just looking around the Internet. Boy, is he 80 years old already or something like that? I think so, yeah. Let me look him up. 80 years old, but when he was a kid, I mean, unbelievable. 74. Oh, oh I thought he was younger older. than I thought. Yeah. When he was a kid, and he did start as a kid, I mean, the guy was just unbelievable. 
and you know he proved he proved he he is a musical genius is this for real so he i'm, I'm sorry to interrupt he's coming to town this month this oh, wow. month stevie wonder yeah uh at the x i'm sorry at target center that's oh. a different venue I, I bet that will be one of the best shows of the year okay did this really happen so as i was looking around the uh, godless internet about this and that stevie wonder i reading about him and whatnot. It appears to me, back in the day, Atari, when Atari first started pumping out their video game system, so what, late 70s, early 80s, they had an ad, uh, looks like a newspaper ad, and uh, it shows the new Atari system and the joysticks and everything that comes with the, the Atari game system. And Stevie Wonder is featured um, a picture of him in the ad, and it says here, uh, as if he's endorsing the product, he says, if I could play video games, you bet it would be an Atari. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to look at this, Josh? Does that look legitimate to you? Uh, let me see. I found that ad. I'm sorry, I swept it right off the table. Did that really happen? I bet that's fake. He's holding the joystick, is he not? And it says, if I could play... Play video it, this looks photoshopped. Okay, I, I'm I glad. Mean, maybe it's legit, but it, I think this is fake. Well, yeah, if it, I just looked up on Snopes, it's fake. Okay. In it's funny, same, though. Okay, well, is this fake? Because in the, in the same article, I read that Ozzy Osbourne, I mean, this shouldn't surprise, I guess, I shouldn't compare this to the Stevie Wonder ad. Because people like Ozzy Osbourne, um, you know, Alice Cooper, you know, had this evil image and it's been gone for decades and they'll do advertisements for soft drinks and tampons, right? I mean, there's, it's, it's not a big deal now for this, these former evil rocker characters to now be doing straight-laced things. Um, that image was shattered a long time ago. Ozzy Osbourne was doing ads for I Can't Believe It's Not Butter. I could see that happen. Yeah. Yeah, I could too. Ice, uh, which one is this? Uh, tea, Ice Tea um, has been doing ads for Honey Nut Cheerios. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, Aussie oh, oh. thing is true. Okay. It, yeah, I it, figured as much. Like I said, it's not a big stretch anymore. Yeah, in 2006, he filmed it for a British television commercial. In 1985, if Ozzy Osbourne was doing commercials <laughs> for butter, I mean, I think the world would have slipped off its axis for a handful of seconds, but it's not 1985 anymore, so. You know, the, the commercial, I feel stupid that I laugh at it every time. Uh, is it the, the band t or group tag team where they do the oh, scoop yeah. there? Yeah. It is. <laughs> scoop there. I don't know what it is, but it's not just the song and the parody and the pun. It's like the, the looks on their faces and the dance they do the in that actor, commercial. I don't the, even, the dad is so good at it. Yeah, I don't even I don't even know the, didn't the notice product the dad. is. Yeah, I didn't either. But I just, you're right. The little right. dance, there's something about yeah. the way they look. Yep. It's so friggin' well, funny. Well, the way I would say it is it's their look, the joy on their faces and the dance that makes it worthwhile in any way. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's, yeah, it's, I mean, because scoop, there it is, yeah. is stupid. Exactly. French but vanilla, Rocky Road, chocolate, peanut butter, cookie dough. <laughs> but the fact, the fact wow. that they're having such a good time with it yeah. absolutely makes the that The looks ad. on their face, that is so funny. All right, I, but I they're had... putting the sprinkles on top. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm not alone. I thought you guys were going to make fun of no, me. No, I love that. Uh, it's and so like, good. Like the dad and the mom that do the dance, too, and then the kid just looks at them. Oh, that's <laughs> great. So it sounds like you, you love every single element of this <laughs> Oh, I do. It's a perfect ad. It's the perfect ad, he says. Okay, um, I had a few listeners text earlier this week uh, wondering where my finger bang drum machine uh, had gone. And I told them it didn't go anywhere. So I just wasn't bringing it in uh, for a while. But I brought it in today. Um, I don't know if you can make it work on the... Uh, I thought maybe we could exit the show with a little musical number. I don't know. Probably because someone around here pressed the wrong button. Yeah, yep, you're up. Well, that's going to kill it. I was going to maybe play a little rap um, beat and... And we could leave with uh, you dorks hollering scoop, there it is. <laughs> um, you can hear it from a distance, but <laughs> yeah. it's not coming through the board. No. All right, fine. 
Yeah. What can you do? You have technical Scoop, problems. There it is. No, it doesn't work, Dan. <laughs> it doesn't work at all. Don't worry about it, Josh. Sit down. It's not working. I don't hear Dick Tracy. Don't worry about it. Sit down. It's Friday. It's our Friday. Sit down. <laughs> not working. I appreciate your efforts, but we can just go to shout outs and get the hell out of Blue here. Blue ball. I'll keep it here over the weekend. On Monday, we can uh, have some fun with it. Left to Bra- uh, Bradford. Jesus uh, texting a shout out to his brother Jake for his bachelor party weekend. Shout out to the handsome South Side Jesus and Type 1 cop Jesus out there crushing crime for us. Happy birthday to the smoke show of a wife, Kelsey, turning dirty 30 from Army Truck Driver Jesus. Uh, this, per- this is from Egg Slan Jesus. Can I get a shout out for my smoking hot concrete working husband? Happy birthday to Piper, turning the big 07 today from Mom, Dad, and Mackenzie. Happy birthday to EP Firefighter Jesus from Chocolate Sunshine Butt Plug Jesus. <laughs> Happy 48th to Jesse from Maria. Happy 49th to Teresa from your son, Tire Guy Jesus. Happy 17th to Mason. And Carpet Cleaning Jesus has two birthday shout-outs, Layla Jesus and Baby Jesus. Have a great weekend. Right now on the Luther Bloomington Kia text line, text MOM. M-O-M to 651-989-9393 for a chance to win tickets to Tom Segura Come Together Tour Friday, April 18th at XL Energy Center. Good luck. The 93X and FS Morning Show. 93 the 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. New episodes drop each weekday. If your podcast platform has ratings, go ahead and give us five stars and uh, maybe give our enemies one. Thanks, and here's a word from our sponsor. Hey, Ashley here. Get your home ready for winter. Schedule your furnace tune-up with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning and save $30. Have a boiler? Save $40 on your boiler tune-up. Visit standardheating.com to book and lock in your savings. Stay cozy, stay ready.